Yeah, I think Chase needs to join still. Who's that? Chase. Okay. Anata. Um, Chase is on, it looks like. Is he? Oh yeah, Chris and um uh um oh shoot. Um Anetta. Annetta's uh, she didn't say she was coming, but um um what about Tress? Is well, she Tress, Tress said she was coming, yeah. Okay, she might pop in. Yeah, she said she was coming, so that's all right. I think we all know each other from the Orbist group, at least that we started on Facebook. I don't know if we all stayed in it. Maybe the name I don't recognize is Joan, so I'm just going to let you take over everything, and I'm going to take notes. Okay, well, let's, let, let everybody introduce themselves while I get going on Facebook here. I've got to, I usually have, I would let Nicole do, but she had, can't control it from her computer. Hang on, let's go to Facebook here. We'll figure that out, too, if you uh, want. On Facebook. You never know, we may find some new people. Oh, Tress is here, okay admit well i found an interesting person that has a collection and how he put it is from all our allied forces what does so that mean it's that his uh his name is robert i think he's a very oh. new friend of mine and i met him just over this past week online so it's yeah. kind of like Oh, you have that collection? Well, we have this collection. How many do you have? It's like everybody I talk to has a thousand pictures. Like, so this is just an interesting take. A lot of his are from um military people, not civilians. So, and not just US military people, like yeah, he said all across the globe. So I, I have a quick question. Grant, where are you streaming Facebook streaming to so I can share it? Um I started to stream it and then I got double sound here. Oh. So I don't know if I'm streaming. It's on my White House UFO. It's supposed to stream. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see Is it, it on there? Yep. Okay, let me just do a short intro and then we'll get everybody to introduce themselves. Uh, well, what I intended to do, this was a meeting was requested by Jeff Lurkey, who has one of the biggest orb collections in the world. And uh, I always like looking at his stuff. And... Um, so we set this up, but I brought in what I consider the the top orb people in the world. Not all of them, but um, people from uh, Australia and, and Netherlands and uh, Scotland and the United States and Canada and all over the place. So um, I wanted to set up, but I want to do a little sort of intro before, because I don't know whether we discussed this the last time we did the, the orb stuff. And um, I guess at first I should start by saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And if you uh, do not believe that the time and space are real, then uh, it's all here and now. Well, you're welcome as well. Um, previously, we had had this discussion and people got you. You get all these so the people who don't read books and, you know, know everything about everything and more about orbs and the president and this sort of stuff. And and uh, a lot of people started um, sort of attacking and that that's fine. And then we <clears> had this this whole issue about the blue orbs. And I thank everybody who sent me the blue orb photos. Because um, you, as you probably know, there's on the, the is being put out by the, the Skinwalker people that there are these blue meanies that follow people around and they will, uh, you know, attack you and do whatever. They're not very nice. And so I put out a request to people, and a lot of the orb people sent me photographs of blue orbs. So I just want to make sure if anybody uh, has any anybody got eaten or anybody got killed by blue orbs or whether they're still very nice because. Uh, my my experience with them is if you actually go back to Betty Andreas and who was one of the top um, abduction um, uh, people in the world had six books written about her. She had a blue orb that she believed was a per, there was an orb that was protecting her through her entire experience, which started I think in 1946, and she just died I think last year. That was one thing I wanted to bring up and to thank people for the blue orb photographs that people sent me. The other is, and I don't know if you people know this. I've written that up in a book that I've got coming out called the Super Bowl. And I talk about orbs in there, but I particularly talk about Skinwalker Ranch. And one of the things I talk about is something that maybe even the orb people don't know about is that you've all heard about the, um, the Skinwalker story and the Defense Intelligence Agency going in there and doing investigations and spending $22 million. And they put out 105 reports or whatever. 
Um, I will maintain one of the reports that they did that was given to the American government was on orbs. Uh, you may not know this, but uh, there was two um, guards that actually um, uh, came forward and have gone public with the fact that that was part of their job. And what they were to do is to walk around Skinwalker Ranch with a dog. Now, they would, wouldn't be a trained dog. It's just an ordinary dog. And they would have this dog and they were just to walk around the dog. And they were given instructions that if at any point on their walk in the middle of the night as they're walking around, if the dog was to go into a surrender position, they were immediately to stop, take out the digital camera and start filming as fast as they could, take all sorts of film. And then they were to take a urine sample. And when they went back, they'd go back every two weeks, they'd go back to Las Vegas. That's where the, uh, the OSAP office was. And they were to give the urine sample to people. So there is a report out there that is held by the American government that talks about orbs. Uh, and a lot of people don't know they were doing an orb study there. And if you've ever seen the interview with Jeff, um, Jeffrey uh, Mishlov with um, Bob Bigelow. Bob Bigelow talks about the fact that he was big into orbs, that he was taking orb photographs and he could actually predict when he took the photograph, how many orbs would show up in the photograph. So uh, people will sort of write this off as like, we're sort of crazy people. But I think uh, in the end, we're all going to get uh, vindicated that this is the real deal and that we are just at the very beginning, the, the sort of the pioneers of this new field of investigation. So thank you for what you do and for sharing your photographs and uh, we'll go from there. And let's let's do an introduction. Let's go, uh, is Tress, oh, Tress is here. Is she, what's going on? Oh, I gotta get Tress in here. I thought she was in already. Okay, so let's go around. Um, we can start uh, with Deb. De uh, introduce yourself, Deb, and then tell me whether you're running your event this year. Do you, are you, you're in Illinois. We'll go do the three Illinois people first and then we'll go from there. Deb, Bru. Thanks, <clears throat> thanks Grant. Um, Deb Frew here from North Central Illinois. And I first uh, met Grant and Jeff at my event that I hold every year in Northern Illinois called the Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe. Grant came down as our headline speaker and Jeff was our, um, our first speaker of the weekend. And I learned of Jeff because of Grant's having interviewed him, and I was just so blown away by his orb photographs and all of his photographs. They're not all orbs, and I was just so amazed by them. I thought, I want to start off the 2021 uh, Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe event with a bang, and <laughs> Jeff knocked everybody off their chairs. So, yes, I am doing the event this year. Um, it's happening August 8th through 11th. And, um, you know, you can find me on the Worldwide Metaphysical Tribe. We used to have uh, someone who came. She still comes now and then who she has a booth and it's called uh, Picture Yourself with an Orb. And she has such a talent for getting orbs in photos that um, she'll just take your picture six or seven times and then send you the one that you like. <laughs> and they all have orbs in them. Wow. Beautiful. We, we we were doing that with uh, North of Winnipeg at the Orb Farm. We were doing these posing that is, seems to become popular now where you, you pose and then people photograph and you get the, maybe an orb in your hand or something like that. It's it's uh, kind of interesting. Um, maybe just uh, give me a couple minutes on the event um, uh, that we had at the end. We had the Skywatch where we had the, the, um, the, the people with the cameras and they're waiting for the orbs and stuff like that. And uh I sat there and I really didn't see anything. I said, and I always said, oh, every time I go on these sky watch things, nothing ever happens and I'm just sitting there. And then they started going around the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the ring of people and the photographs and, and uh, the, the one with uh, Sinead with the, the being standing beside her. And of course, the first person I went is to Jeff and I said, Jeff, what do you get? And he's got, he's got like a, I don't know, 50 photographs or whatever. They had 350. Like, was going on. I didn't see anything. Like, he had 350 pictures of that night. That was I was incredible. absolutely yeah. shocked. So <laughs> the the event itself, um, this is, it's not a UFO event. It's not a cryptid event. It's an event about metaphysics and the intersection of metaphysics with all the other uh, paranormal and woo-woo stuff in the world. Because... Um, I feel like 
finally the door is opening that we can talk to each other. Uh, it used to be that the psychics were the crazy ones and then the UFO people were the crazy ones. And now the cryptid people are the crazy ones. And, you know, everybody gets their chance at being the crazy one. And I feel like this is our chance to talk to each other. So it uh, starts on a Thursday late afternoon and goes till Sunday morning. Uh, this year we have Tracy Garbett Dolan coming. Um, we have uh, Bill Homan with the Crystal Skull, the original Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. We also have um, Jim Gilmore, who is a Cherokee uh, teacher who has addressed the um, the UN about peace. And he actually is uh, was friends with all of the Hopi elders. And so he knows all of their prophecies and they have all passed on. And so he's carrying their stories and also the, in, the information we need to get through those prophecies. And then our final person is actually someone that you know, Grant, and that is um, Candace Powers, oh. who is a numerologist. And oh, yeah. Candace, um, you know, she, she, she and I were talking one day and she said, you know about the fourth turning, right? And and that's the the place we're in, the Kali Yuga, where everything is, you know, tossed salad until we figure out what the new way is going to be. And she said, you know, everyone thinks the Kali Yuga, the fourth turning is going to be horrible and nuclear war. And she said, I just don't see it that way. She said the numbers don't support it. And she is a master numerologist. And so I said, you need to be the opening speaker because people need to start on that hopeful note. So um, she'll be starting. We are also um, at a new venue this year. So we have 43 acres of woods, uh, big top 10,000 square foot log cabin, little glamping cabins. We have free classes, remote viewing and uh, palm reading and lots of just fun things to do so that, uh, you know, you can choose your adventure. So it'll be a great year. Wow. What's what's the website? It's worldwide metaphysical tribe dot com. Beautiful. It's, it's actually sort of an inspiration. My new book's called the, the Super Bowl. And what you're doing is the what happened to Ray Hernandez uh, after he saw me give a consciousness lecture. He had this experience on the Miami freeway where he suddenly pops into he's in in a sort of an, uh, a near death experience type thing where he's out of his body and the beings have this wheel and it's spinning and it's got everything like remote viewing and you know tarot card reading and ufos and remote you know all this sort of stuff and they're saying you got to quit parsing this stuff it's all the same thing so this is a book i'm writing called the super bowl and i go through maybe 40 different paranormal phenomena and i show you this crosses over to this you find orbs in in mediumship you find it in ufos you find it here and it's not it's all over the place you, you we get in the one little field and you go down that field and you miss the whole the whole idea that it's all one thing it's all it's all connected so uh, congratulations for you to do it. I hope people can can uh, go there and make sure when you, the people who uh, are there, if you go, make sure you get, uh, Candace has more stories than I have. She's unbelievable in terms of the, her experiences. It's like, wow, one of the most well-read well people I've ever met and has flown the craft and uh, has, you know, was a, a client of Bud Hopkins, uh, had two sessions with Bud Hopkins about her experiences and stuff like that. So, excellent that you'd bring in uh, Candace there. So talking exactly. about your event, um, you, you're at a big, the second person I'll go to is uh, my good friend, Nicole, who helps me with a lot of stuff and is actually, um, <laughs> I, I'm very impressed because she deals with the bad boys of ufology. She goes after people who everybody's afraid of in the UFO world and, and talks to them. And this is one of your tests. You're talking about uh, testing out uh, uh, people that you're dating. I mean, this is one of the <laughs> things the big cabin and uh you say hey guess where we're going in august and then you, then you know where where your where your relationship oh is that kind of date i don't know i you know i did that actually um so many years ago i took and i hadn't dated in years and years and years and i asked this guy to go with me to a book signing to and that's when i officially met jim peniston and it turned into like this 
12 to 16 hour drive dinner book signing event thing and i feel like i totally tortured my date <laughs> and he couldn't <laughs> escape <laughs> so i've been kind of sensitive to bringing it up in uh bulk <laughs> but better better to find out now than six months or a year from now after you've had a kid i or, think you know, it's, like it's a good second date band-aid i have to rip off that's how i see it so <laughs> so yeah it's been fun i've had lots of interesting conversations but then a lot of you guys know that i dipped into this emt realm and so that's given me opportunities to talk with people that work with like near-death experience every single day and so just some of the stories that they've shared when people are passing, whether it's loved ones or strangers and orbs that appear and, you know, some of them just blow it off and disregard it. guard. Some think it's a very spiritual experience. Um, I've heard little things like about hearing the whoosh or cats showing up. That I thought was interesting because Grant, you and I have that whole like portal cat research thing going on. I just, on, I just so wrote our... that up in my book last night, the whole Linda House story about the cat coming through the portal. Right. Well, yeah, it's we weird have that the... you bring that up today. That's a synchronicity. Well, which I'm also I writing got... about synchronicities. Right. Well, you know, we've talked about um people being near the end and certain loved ones appearing or guides appearing. Well, I came across these stories of cats appearing. And yeah, I mean, wow. they're just wild. So cats, you know, portal cats, maybe they do have something to do with the orbs or maybe it is just the individual. Like Linda describes being so attached to her cat that passed, you know, it could be something like that, but it's wow. it's wild. I've I've loved every moment that people have been open enough to share these things with me. And yeah, so- wow. And you're and you're you're helping me uh, work on these, as I call them, the bad boys, the Ron oh, Dundalkis well. and the Richard Dodies of the world that uh, that you seem to have interacted with. And when you get to sort of see the other side, you see a different sort of world. So thank you for doing well, that kind of work. That's something that you know. I think I cried to you about the first time you interviewed me. Was like coming from this very nuts and bolts world of exploring documents and ufo history to being flung into more of you know the high strangeness research and stuff like that where we've kind of come together on what we're into and yeah like so people so many people just turn their back on you or get mad or don't understand why you're wanting to get a opposing <laughs> perspective from people but then, yeah, I guess most people don't realize either. It's like these things come out in books or they come out in our conversations we have on social media. And it does reflect a different story. I got called Mrs. Greenstreet the other day in a Twitter space. Uh -oh. Just uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, is that a compliment? Because I share his perspective on a lot of things or was that supposed to be like an insult or, you know, so anytime like name calling and mudslinging happens, that's when I feel like I'm uh, rattling the right cages and poking the right bears. And so whatever, it's my journey. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out. Let's go anytime. now to uh, the guy who asked for the for the meeting. And that is Jeff Lurkey out of Chicago, who uh, this is one of my favorite cities in the world, except when I drive through it, and then I hate it. But otherwise, <laughs> it's uh, been one of my favorite cities. Of the, and and there is a, I was supposed to, there's an event taking place for anybody who's in the Chicago area. Uh, a, a physical medium is going to be there in April. And I've not, I'm looking at, I'm still looking at it, but I think I'm going to be in New Mexico reading a 43 page document in April. Uh, but um, there's a, a one of the most famous physical mediums in the world is coming to Chicago. And I think, Deb, you're going to be there. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Actually, I'm not going to be there, but there is a waiting list. Yeah. So Ty Muga uh, is from Germany is going to be there. Yeah. And uh, this guy's highly controversial. Uh, the, he's got some mud being slinged at him. Uh, but this is the guy that has the reports coming out of his eyes and just like, oh, my goodness. It's like, wow. It, I've interviewed him, but he'll be in Chicago in April for anybody who's into physically. This is the one of these, this is the potentially the the most highly um, known media physical medium in the world is going to be in Chicago. Did you who did you say his name? His name is Kai Muga. 
Yeah, Kai Muga. He's uh, a lot of his stuff you can find online, but it's a, it's in German, I think. But then his uh, partner translates a lot of yeah. their circles to English too. So yeah, oh my God, he is kind of renowned as like the top in the world right now. Yeah, he had actually agreed to my DNA test, which I wanted to do. I was going to go down to Florida to do it, where I believe that if you're trans-channeling, your DNA is going to change. And we know who his control is. He's a former parapsychologist from maybe died maybe 40 years ago or whatever. And I thought, wow, would that be something if, if that guy's DNA turned up uh, when Kai is, is in trance? Uh, because then you'd have the 23andMe stuff where you'd have all the relatives, all this guy's relatives would show up. And that would be absolute stunning evidence it, that, that there's an event. But the, unfortunately, the guy amazing. never got married. So he's got no kids and no family. And we can't really track that. But Kai had agreed to my DNA experiment. Yeah, COVID ruined that. I mean, the oneness virus <laughs> ruined that for yeah. a little bit. But yeah, and I think what I loved about his story is it's his gift started when he was so young. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that often happens. That would be so awesome. Maybe you go to read your documents and I'll go visit Kai. There we go. <laughs> Now yeah. go back to we're going well, back to Jeff. Really left you out here, Jeff. I mean, let, let's start by introducing yourself and then tell me. I always I always want to know with with you what's your collection of photos now? How many? And you are connected to Getty Photos, so you're not some guy off the street. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think the I'm at like two hundred ninety four thousand ish. There you go. Collection of images and and different videos and stuff. Uh, but yeah, my name's Jeff Lurkey, uh, from Chicago um i'm a musician i play in a band called blood people uh, i also work for getty images um i'm not a photographer for getty images or anything like that but um i have been lucky enough to like work alongside some of the world's best um which is helpful when trying to like confirm what things are or aren't or uh you know get some more detail on, on like images and uh digital aberrations and, and stuff like that and just figuring out I guess the what it is I'm seeing in the images and stuff like that so I guess to uh fast forward or rewind a little bit um in maybe 2018 late 2018 um is when I started to uh capture images of uh orbs and different craft and and stuff like that and uh I guess it spawned from um I started reading into uh, the Project Stargate stuff, and it sort of blew my mind just uh, just the realization that, you know, like psychic abilities and things like that are real. And uh, um, I've always been sort of open and curious and uh, into the UFO phenomena. And I think, uh, you know, seeing some early interviews with Grant, you were actually kind of the first person for me who like, put in perspective how connected to consciousness all of it is and uh so sort of from there it's been an, an evolving sort of adventure and uh um so yeah so I've got video and images of different things like orbs and beings and uh different things in the sky stuff like that so and once once we get through the intros uh you're anybody that wants to present uh, get your stuff ready. You can share the screen. We'll have show time. Uh, but Jeff's stuff is like mind boggling. And the interesting thing is you're in like in Chicago, you're not like out in the edge of the city or something. You're, you're right in the no. middle. Yeah. And you're getting this kind of stuff and you've got the being, hopefully you show the being on the stairs and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. That stuff is you going like, wow, I think there's cool. maybe one collection as good as yours. And that's um, Teresa, uh, Teresa from, uh, from Phoenix area and i've always tried to get her to come public she won't come public but her stuff is is like yours it's just like you go wow now grant if i'm remembering correctly around the same time like jeff started sharing with us that's when we kind of made the parallels of the orbs and the mist and the beams yeah. and how the mist is actually a bunch of really teeny teeny orbs and you can see the the orbs and the beams and the faces and you know it just spun all out of control <laughs> around that time but and you mentioned the staircase because i was like oh my god i need to go to that staircase and just live there for like 
<laughs> 10 days i don't know however long it takes like that was fun yeah yeah that that's uh that's a, a an interesting uh, uh photo and uh in interesting stuff that that uh, jeff has so let's let's move on so we can get to the show time that i think most people came here to see the the uh photos and you did mention the mist and the and the um the beams which is what for people who will claim they this is dust and it's you know whatever whatever that they they dreamed up with their left brain interpreter. Uh, when you start looking at the data, when you start looking at you know almost three hundred thousand photos that Jeff has, and a lot of people on here have tens of thousands of photos. When you start looking, that's when you see these patterns, and that's when I would start to go to people and say, "Hey, you got orbs? Have you got any with uh, like smoke or dust? And, oh yeah, I got those." And then they would bring out all those photographs. They didn't know none of these people knew this. Was, you start to see these patterns or the beams. When Chris Bletso first sent me a beam in two thousand fifteen, he said, "Look, this thing this." beam coming out of the sky and then i asked people say hey you got any beam photos like oh yeah, i got those too and and then you realize there was this pattern it wasn't just orbs it was this dust and it was this beam and there was a definite pattern to this thing that gave it validity that this is like everything else in the universe the more you look at it the more complex it gets now let's go uh to drew i think you're in uh to texas correct yes sir yeah i'm in i'm in dallas texas and uh, I've experienced, I've had anomalous experiences, you know, pretty much my whole life, uh, including with shadow people, owls, wow. and and all of that kind of thing. Um, the orb experience really didn't start for me until 2021. So it's been been almost three years now. And uh, but once it started, it really started with vengeance, and it's just continued to escalate um, every every year. Um, that that connection has grown and grown. And um, over the past year, I do want to say I've made really good friends with a couple of people in your Orbology group. Uh, Jeff is one um, and Chase also. And I've learned so much from both of them. And I've actually had a chance to meet Chase in person. And uh, we've we've had some amazing experiences together. Um, had a whole lot of fun getting to get to meet him. Um, so I look forward to, you know, getting to know everyone else in the community a little bit better in the years ahead and, you know, sharing what, what I may know or my experiences. And, uh, I feel like the more of us working together on all of this stuff, the, the better, um, it seems to have some kind of an amplifier effect. And, and I know with, uh, with, with Jeff and Chase and I, it seems like we kind of, in a way, almost infect one another or something to where things that they were experiencing now I'm experiencing and vice versa. So it's been real interesting to, to see that that come to pass, but I just look forward to learning from, from all of you. Yeah. That is one of the things that you see in a pattern in ufology is that once you have an experience that sort of like rips, rips the veil and then all this other stuff starts coming in, it starts with one thing and moves to something else and then it's infectious that once you're around other people then it's it's it has well they call it the hitchhiker but it's it's it'll always be reflective that if you're if you're there with arms and your special forces guys and you're hunting the skinwalker uh the reaction that you get from the hitchhiker is not very positive but if you're in a more positive frame of mind you're going to have more positive experiences in terms of what you're bringing home and what you're sharing with other people i'm glad you That's brought cool. up that grant that you know if the hitchhiker effect, they also make it sound like a negative thing, you know, Yeah. where it does have this positive side to it, too. Like even I think a lot of people just call that their synchronicity. It's like all the synchronicities start falling into place. So, you yeah. know. Yeah, you had you had like, for example, you had Chris Bledsoe, who had people like Bob McGuire and his wife uh, went there to see him and they went home and they got healed. So they, they they took the hitchhiker home, and I think the phenomenon is neutral. Whatever game you want to play is the game they they want to play. So if you want to play hunt the skinwalker with with uh, weapons and stuff like that, well they 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 really play that game. They just whatever it is, you're it's and that's what uh, Brandon Fugel said when people came to the ranch. And I've, I've written this up a number of times. He said he warns people. The phenomenon is reflective. Be careful what you think when you go on the ranch. And of course, T uh, Taylor goes on there and he says, oh, this is garbage. People are all insane. And then boop, boop, and suddenly he gets zapped. And then suddenly he's, he's down down the rabbit hole with the rest of them. And uh, uh, the, the guy with the with the um, 
Weather, T Tim Weatherington, is that his name? The guy, the guy with the, uh, the, where they're digging, where they say no digging, and he gets brought in, and he says, oh, this is all garbage. Next thing um, you know, he's sitting on the floor, and, and he's he's all dizzy and stuff like that. And then he said, absolutely, every time they they, they dug, because, of course, what do they say? Like, don't dig. And, of course, what do they say? First thing, they say, hey, let's dig. Let's dig. We don't care. We're not going to stay. And he said, absolutely, every single time, every single time, either him or his equipment is affected when they dig. And this is this idea of, 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 be, of being reflective, that it reflects back what you put into it. I agree with that. Did you, see, did you see Chris's interview on uh, Danny Jones? Yeah. Like, yeah. I thought it was interesting. Near the end, he was talking about NASA uh, visiting the Kennedy Space Center and yeah. uh, being told by uh, someone there that uh, basically people who visit there often bring something back with them. And he also yeah. said that uh, when the rockets fire off into space, he said they never come back alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something else comes back with I, mem I remember uh, years ago, uh, Billy Cox telling me that. He was the reporter for USA Today down in Florida. And he would talk about that at every single launch. <laughs> they, would, they would have something. It was never made public. But it was a well-known fact that there was this this sort of bizarre connection. And uh, I was like... Oh, I was going to say, I like pointing out that this this doesn't just happen at Skinwalker Ranch either, like with people's work like Gary's and Jimmy's, which I think everybody in here knows, and how they plot like these power locations. And I think a few in here even know uh -oh. some of these locations. Did I freeze? <laughs> yeah, you froze. Yeah. Did you pay your um, internet bill or what? <laughs> i think it's the cell tower thing that's going on i don't know it's been affecting a lot of my devices or it's all those bad guys i'm talking to you know <laughs> in all the time but um yeah so it's not just skinwalker ranch and experiencers go to these places and have effects and i think that's something that they don't really talk about with some of the people that go to the ranch and yeah. definitely they don't talk about other places being as special as that place because they want that marketability. But go find your closest location to you and go see what happens. That's what I say. Yeah. And then share it so that other people can can learn. Let's go to the Netherlands now. Joan? You there? Yeah. Okay. Happy yeah, you, you got one of the better collections. I think you sent me blue orb photographs, right? Yeah, I'm sort of into the blues. I don't know why, but they uh, <laughs> they like me, I guess. And they're all very nice, as far as right. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, some of the photographs you had were just absolutely yeah. stunning. I I think I've got one in the upcoming book, and when I go into the blue orb thing, it was oh, great. one yeah. of your photos is just like stunning and yeah. blue, blue. Unfortunately, in books they won't come out as blue, but blue, yeah. blue, blue. I mean, not just like yeah. a yeah. sort of blue. Yours are like blue people's blue eyes type things. Yeah. So I started up, I'm a musician. I was born in Manitoba, actually, and I studied there. There you go. And, uh, and, We're in Manitoba. I didn't know that. Yeah. And um, then I went to the Netherlands because I'm a musician. And everybody will imagine a row of guitars behind me, but uh, actually I'm a violinist. So I, I'm in classical music. I played in an orchestra. Wow. Do you ever have and, any paranormal? Uh, uh, I wrote a book on music. Do you ever have any paranormal musical stories? Um, not really but of course classical composers have been inspired by channel type experiences so that, that they just trying to write it down fast well, what, what instrument do you play a violin oh because there's the famous uh story i have to tell the story because I've, I've got it in one of my books with beethoven where he writes the left left hand violin piece i think it was and the guy comes to him and he says that was the worst thing i've ever that is absolutely unplayable and he's and then beethoven says to him i when I wrote that, I was talking to God. Do you think I had time to worry about your puny little left-hand violin piece? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know the quote. Very good, yeah. So I, I had my musical career, and um, I was always interested in kind of weird things, uh, especially crop circles. Wow. And um, then I, what well, was through crop circles, I thought, now, come on, there must be something going on in, in Canada, big spaces. I mean, I grew up in the prairie, so yeah. why aren't there crop circles? I started looking around. And then I ran into your story about um, Charlie Red Star, actually. And then I got started into that. And then uh, 
taking through taking pictures I thought oh wow and I started getting stuff and then I got in touch with Janet Dornian and so that took off we have common friends and uh and I've been to Orbsville yeah you so, actually came here last this or, last year that's you right before. yeah to the yeah last year to and we ran around tell that story what we were doing people don't realize that we we it's like Jeff was mentioning where you get linked up with people <clears throat> And uh, Janet hosted us there, and everybody's running around with these cameras, and and yeah, call yeah, she it. seems to have a fantastic site there. I guess well, she'll be able to tell you about it. indigenous background, of course, and uh, yeah, and then there's a certain special field we didn't quite make it there last year, but uh, yeah, the gifting field. And I don't know <laughs> what happens. I didn't do too well last year, but it's a great spot. Anyway, so I just. Uh, take uh, pictures. I'm very lazy. I just open my back door and usually take two or three shots a night. And there's usually something there. And um, that's about it. Um, I'll show a few blue ones later, I guess. So Beautiful. that's my story. Yeah. When, Beautiful. When yeah, you, you got, we got one of the more interesting collections I've seen. Oh, yeah. I should say my uh, my site on, uh, on, on Facebook and that is called Listening with Orbs because I don't mm -hmm want to explain my weird hobby to all my musician friends so <laughs> i sort of go undercover <laughs> i i was gonna ask um if when you go to your back door and take your pictures i think right. maybe jeff can comment on this do you feel like do you feel like a calling in that moment like oh it's time to go take a picture because i've experienced that before and then the other comment I'll, i always want to ask musicians is we also talk about um playing instruments and entering that sort of like flow state yeah and have you experienced that and that, I think that's a better way of maybe asking Grant's question of like during that flow state do you do you feel connected is that when you feel connected to the intelligence yeah. of the phenomenon or yeah yeah very much uh, I don't have it with my photography I'm not that sensitive but in music I've had, it doesn't happen very often, but you're always hoping and try, trying to get mm -hmm. the, but it's, uh, and then it, it, the music just goes and all you have to do is stay out of the way, basically, which is right. more easily said than done, but, uh, but see, that's, that's incredible. Where... it just goes, your body sort of melts and you're just, the music, I don't know, you're one with I the music. I love that. Mm -hmm. And see, I think some of our friends, if they took photographs of you in that moment, there would be orbs all around you. Oh, so, maybe. Never thought maybe. of that. We'd yeah, let's try that. <laughs> there's a, we'll do that next time you come to Manitoba. We'll do that. We'll do an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, I bet your gifting field with the orbs, I bet if we would talk to Jimmy, it would fall on that grid. So in some way, shape, oh, or yeah, form, that... I bet it's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Janet sent him the coordinates. Yeah. And then, yeah, he does the math side and sends the messages. <laughs> okay. Well, let's bring Janet in now. Janet lives uh, just north of me here in uh, just north of Winnipeg. Has a beautiful, I think, a five acre farm. Yeah. Does, oh, I should actually show it when she's doing, I'm going to go get, the, she actually gave me an orb. I've actually got an orb that she oh. does metal, <laughs> very interesting uh, metal art. So Janet, welcome and introduce yourself a little bit. And I'm going to go and show people your orb. I'm going to go get your orb. Okay. So uh, yeah, my name's Janet Dornian and I live just north of Winnipeg. And um, so we have dubbed it Orbsville. I sort of got started in Orbs when I went to Sedona and uh, Miles, uh, my husband and I were able to spend an evening with Tom Dongo, which was just fascinating, the stuff he showed us. And then um, about a year after I got home here from that, it's just like, well, gee, I wonder if I have orbs in my backyard. So then you start shooting and then you get some, it, it builds, like uh, everybody's been saying, it builds. And uh, that's when I had to uh, track down Grant and I thought, boy, if anybody knows about this stuff, he does. So, and, and it started really great discussions back and forth. So then we've had uh, Grant and Dest out here a few times and we've had, uh, uh, Rob Freeman and the crew out a few times to shoot and and so we always have great orbs here we have and and, and I think it builds uh, the land is uh, I think it's it's crossed from the original Fort Gary which was a fur trading post here so I think there was a lot of First Nation uh, people on this land 
at one time when they were trading. And um, so the orbs have just developed. And usually once or twice a year, I try to get a group of people, whoever's interested, to come out. So, you know, I would love if any uh, anybody's coming to this area that we'd have an evening here because the orbs show up in droves, don't they, Grant, when uh, people come and, and when Mark was here and Rob Freeman was here, the pictures we got from those nights. And when you and Desta, we just had tons and tons of pictures. So, and, and you have and the big screen, you got to mention the big screen. You have a screen the size of a oh, wall. Yeah. And then everybody so... takes the stuff out of their camera and it's like a competition <laughs> who, who got the best orb photographs that night. Yeah, so the evenings usually go, we, we have a nice supper, we go out and do an orb shoot, and then Miles hooks up the computer to the big screen, so then everybody pops their SD cards in so we can see them right away, and it is so much fun to see what everybody gets, because it is different. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, you know and there was just, my little uh, amateur ones when I went with Dust. You could see that people, <laughs> some people are more sensitive than others. Mine are all like the I got the odd little one, and it was like a little white thing. And then Dust had like blue ones and red ones and giant <laughs> what they call them the giant reds, you know, and stuff like that. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and we were shooting in the same spot, same time, pointing the cameras in the same direction, yeah. stuff like that. And some people got really you. You always get really good stuff. So that was yeah. It, and it's and it's just fun and i think honestly i i don't understand you know i think it totally is reflective of what you're bringing to the party because we had a ton of fun and we had a ton of orbs and uh um and just i, I won't take a lot of time here but just a couple of things i noticed the last little while is one um thing that happened just the other day was interesting it because it's it's been a mild winter here we've had a bit of fog and i was just drawn to go out one night and uh there was no wind it was still as a pin and i have this new um cell phone i turned on the video and the orbs are coming so fast if we have a few minutes i'll show it later yeah. and and it just blew me away i came ran back into the house i said miles come see this so he go, comes out and of course it is still is still as a pin out there and these orbs are just, it looks like a snowstorm so that was fun uh that's a new experience and the other thing uh we have a 14 uh month old grandson so i was taking a little video of him dragging this uh, broom around and there goes a couple of orbs zipping past him in, in the video and in my mouth just because they were so quick i have to figure out how to do the stop uh, picture on the orbs and I showed it to Miles and of course we just laughed it's just like okay he's got his own little orbs going on too <laughs> <laughs> running through the family describe the orb or the art you do and uh, talk about the one behind you the the orb art oh, yeah. so I, I do metal art and um, uh, talk about being in the flow state I never really thought of my artist myself as an artist much until 20 years ago but these things would come into my head and if I didn't make them, they, the, the image would not leave my brain. So for me, it was just like, this thing is gonna be shown to me. I don't claim to invent this stuff. It was shown to me. I would walk around it in my head. It's like, okay, that's how I'm putting it together. So the piece behind me, um, I went out uh, one night to shoot orbs and I took a picture and there was some, a big mist of orbs there. And I literally talking to the orb says, I don't know what to do with that. It, I, it doesn't have enough definition. So I walked up the road and shot some more pictures, walking back, stood in that spot again, took a picture. And this time it was far more defined. And it's like, yes, that's exactly what I want. So I came home and I was just buzzed. I sat down and drew the whole picture of these two pieces in the background because it's three layers deep it's 3d and i knew which ones were going where up and down and and it just it was just like a total download i sat down and drew the whole thing out i couldn't leave it in about half an hour and so then i made the piece behind me and uh it is it's my uh you know my, my impression of the orbs and then my friend uh wendy is a glass artist so she put some glass pieces in there and you know it's funny a lot of people walk into the house and they just stop and they just look at that and and it's just like whoa you know is that for sale i go no not that one <laughs> <laughs> and you do owls as well you i remember death about yes. like owls you do owls yes i do owls i do sasquatch i mean it's all it is all linked together because you're inspired to do this and and uh 
like Joan says with the music, sometimes I'm not sure when I get started. You follow your hands. Your hands seem to know what to do. And if you turn off your brain from being logical, um, so so it's great fun. So, uh, yes, this is the open invitation to Orbsville. Anybody come in this direction, man, you got to come out here and shoot orbs. Have, so you, have you got a website, <laughs> website where your art Oh, is? yes. Our Facebook site is uh, the Orbs of St. Clements. So we post on there, not maybe as often as we should. But it, I find, yeah, there's lots going on between, you know, uh, getting stuff sorted and, and getting it posted. I tend to take pictures and then forget to post them. But, you know, it, can they get your busy. art on there as well? Is there a link to your art there? Uh, the art is uh, Steal Your Art Away. So that's a separate web, uh, web, Facebook website. Give me that again. And waves. Steal Your Art Away. Oh. So the funny story about that is I was going to a meeting and I didn't have a business name. And so it's like get, getting a, letting your brain run away. So I'm just standing there washing my vehicle. It's like, I need a business name, man. I can't show up at this business meeting without a name. And then, and it just into my ear, steal your art away. Cause I wow. work with steel. So it's like, Beautiful. yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I would encourage people to look at your stuff. Cause here's your one that you gave me. Yeah, that's your very own blue uh, blue icy. orb. Uh, blue orb. How do you like that? <laughs> wow, it's like beautiful. But like probably a one of a kind. I mean, it's like, it is one of a kind. Nobody else has go. got one, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. It's like uh, fascinating, and thank you for hosting these events. There, I mean, you have like the Winnipeg group has gotten pretty big. Um, you know, I think there was just twelve hundred people or something like that. But yeah. uh, you know that you had a, a a group of them all showed up there, and it's. It's a place because you'll find that it's in the fun. UFO group and or any sort of thing like this where your family becomes the people that you deal with here because they understand you. They they're on the same wavelength as you. And it becomes like a, a family of, of people that you love and admire and uh, share your your stories with. We try and work it around when Joan's coming to Canada because she yeah. has to be here, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be there for sure. And uh Right on. Anybody else? Open invite. I mean, in a, you don't have to come when the event is on, like the, the evening we have. It just any time anybody wants to shoot orbs, just yeah, get in contact with me and yeah. and Miles. We'd love to have people come. Yeah, and bring I mean, maybe if certain times of the year you'll need mosquito stuff. So it's, yes, you will. <laughs> and we can actually, and we actually did that where uh, we can tell a mosquito on a photograph anytime you, cause you can, yes. you, you get a lot of them there and you can say, okay, there's yeah. a mosquito and it's we quite clear. You get the wings and <laughs> it's like, it's obvious. Spit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bugs. Let's go to Scotland now. Tress, are you there? You're, you're muted. Hi everyone. Yeah, Hi, Tress. You Welcome. You've got a, a, a massive collection. You've got a, an interesting story. I've interviewed you a couple of times. And uh, yeah. you have a book. I had asked you about your book. You may have a book coming out or is it out yet? I'm still in the middle of um, writing the book. I always find something else to put in it. And I always say if I had put it out a year ago, I wouldn't have the stuff now to put in it. So when it's ready, it'll be ready. They'll tell me when it's finished because I'm still getting a lot of different photographs and um, just messages that they want me to put in the book. So, yes, and it's getting the time as well to be able to spend on doing it, you know, with everything else. So, Describe hopefully. your background as to, as to who they are and, and what your your purpose is, and maybe talk a little bit about your animals, because uh, you're very much in animals more than anybody, I think. Yeah, I've got a cat just now. She's she's uh, 14 and she's scraping at the door here. So if you hear her, it's just she's trying to get through. <laughs> um, yeah, I work with all sorts of animals, foxes, badgers, bats, um, owls, cats, dogs, you name it. I work with them all. I have done since I was a child. I spent most of my life with animals rather than human beings because I didn't want to be around human beings growing up and being at school. Um, I didn't fit in at school with any of the human beings and the teachers treated me really badly at school because I couldn't I couldn't work out how the writing was done. I couldn't work out how to to spell, I couldn't the mathematics, it was all um un, abnormal to me because I just didn't understand it coming from another planet. Um in the universe, we just we do everything completely different from the human race. Um, I, I taught my own light language, as you call it. I sing my own light language um, songs. 
Um, I do my own writing. Um, I do my own, um, everything's different that I do. Um, I was a singer. I was in a group. I travelled when I was younger, um, all around different places. Uh, that was the day when there was Bay City Rollers and the Rolling Stones and all that, and we all sort of gathered. Um, I come from a background of celebrities. My father, he was um, in the Jolos Orchestra. He was a drummer in that and travelled during the war. Um, so it goes away back, the, the, the music side of it, and I write my own songs, my own poetry, my own stories which I've got books of that I keep getting told I should really um, get them into books and put them out there. But like everything, I sort of drag my heels and keep <laughs> into my comfort zone. Um, since I met Grant a few years ago, he sort of pulled me out of my comfort zone into an interview. And I think that was the start of my road and my journey for coming forward and starting to tell everyone and explain about everything what I did because before that I would get ridiculed I would be told I was mad I would be told that there was something wrong with me that I was different and I was to go away and be quiet and not say anything so the past now um 10 years it's sort of now been a journey of telling everyone opening up and saying that I am not human and it sounds maybe unusual to people they can't understand it but I do travel to my own planet Sukruma far off and uh, I do change into another being which um, is not human because I know that I slip into this human body and I come out of this human body and I know my purpose here is to awaken the people on the planet to the truth that they're in a program on earth and that they've been put in this program since they were born. The planet was not meant for people to come on um, and change the whole views about love and about um, being one consciousness with each other. It ended up that they started feeling that um, possessions were more important, that the greed started getting in their way, and it all got out of control to the way that they started hating each other, fighting wars. And now we're all sort of taking a step back and saying, well, we need to draw all the humans in now and gather them. And telepathically, we are now sharing a lot of thoughts on Earth through the humans' minds to change their thoughts down here. And I know it's a lot for people to take in because um, I'm educated and taught in a different way from what you are all taught on Earth. And um, I do now my own, um, I do my own um, Zoom group on a Saturday where it's called Sukruma Healing. And I'm teaching people to learn about the human being, their body and coming out of their body and raising themselves above their actual being to be connected to their source. So this is what I do now on a Saturday with a group. And um, it's starting to get bigger. And anyone who wants to come on it, you know, just get in touch because this is the, the root of the teaching on Earth. Now, I work with a lot of different species. Um, I've got Tibran, who's always with me. He's a small grey. He's like a wee boy with big black eyes. Several people have seen him and come to me and said that they had been with him. Um, he does travel around different places. He's been with me, as I say, since I was four, guarding me, looking after me, um, keeping me right long before I even started telling anybody about this. He was always with me. Um, I work with, as I say, we've got different species on the planet. We've got the feline cat people. We've got the blue people. Uh, we've got the golden teachers who have the golden eyes. Um, so many different species. Uh, the mantis beings are very kind beings. I have met a lot of the greys and they're not like what people are saying that they are down on earth because they are very kind to the greys. And that's another thing about the government and what I feel about the government and what they're trying to frighten the people with, which is not right at the moment. Um, I get I get a lot of pictures, I've got thousands and thousands of pictures of spacecrafts, of um, other species. I've got um, evidence of other species. Uh, and Tress, for a second, didn't one of your spacecraft pictures make like headline news? 
in the newspaper and they ran a big story on it like i was like yeah that's like everybody's gonna see this thing now and (laughs) that went all around the world and i did an interview with linton moulton howe and a few others wanted interviews around the world um when i it was we were out we were out um we were at a sky watch and we turned the key of the the car on so the the camera on the car came on. So as the car at the back of us swirled round, its lights hit the craft above our car. And you could see the craft sort of a green color above the car because it would go green with the yellow lights. But it's actually a metallic color, um, which one of my friends um, changed it to that, the metallic color. So um, it's still going. People are still talking about it. Um, I'm going to be doing a, an interview with Rob. That my second interview with Rob, it's um, Spaced Out Radio. I will be talking about that and showing the film of that because that's the next thing we'll be doing. Um, but I do have other pictures. I've got I've got pictures of the greys, the small greys standing at my window outside looking out and I've got pictures of the green species in the craft above my head looking down. They'll all be in my book. Um, I've got a picture that only one person has of me changing from a human into the other, coming from my being into a human, and I've got all the fuzzy stuff around me, and only wow. one, I've given that to one person. That will be my book, so it'll be interesting for people to see. Now, wow. I'm... I'm interested to see if your green being looks like what I saw on Jeff's stairs. <laughs> yeah. well, she can comment when she sees it. Jeff will show it. She can make a comment on it, whether it's... They're, ve- they're very happy, we green beings. They're very, very, very gentle and very happy. And they're always happy to see you when they come. You know, they're, they're, they're just full of... Um, I don't know. You'll find a lot of these species that are coming that want to be with you are just overjoyed and just full of love and, and they'll heal. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the blue, the, the blue orbs and that. We I work with the orange orb and the blue orb, and we've got a pink and white one which is alive. They are actually really live beings and they turn into like a human with their arms and legs. And they don't have a complete face, but they turn in so that they can be with you to show you that that's what they are. And that's what I'm working with. I give on on from Sakuma and I on my Zoom. I tell everyone to pick an orb, a blue or orange one, and that's a being, and they have to get to know that being gradually, and that being will hold, heal their body, heal their mind, and you know, because I'm bringing now from Sakuma the work that they do down to earth. So. Now you you said you're gonna release that on uh, Rob Gee's weekend show. That's our friends uh, with Space Style Radio. Yeah. Well, she's just yeah. doing an interview. I've got to push her. I'll be now pushing Travis to get this book out. That's part of my <laughs> my role on Earth is I have the yep. uh, publishing, the It's All Connected. And the, the main thing was that when I would talk to people, whatever their paranormal experience was, I would say, do you think uh, they want you to put this out? And they said, yeah. Do you think they're helping you do the book? Yeah. Do you think they want you to do the book? Yeah. Well, okay, let's go. Let's get it. And that was my role is to get people to... To tell the story, so I'll be pushing trust now to get this story out because I've heard I about also, this book. I've got a picture. I'm telling. This is the first time I'm telling anyone. I've got oh, a picture go. of a grey. His face. You can't see his body, and he's coming towards me. And I've taken the pictures, and you see his face in full, just staring at me. So that's going in my book. Um, wow. Yes, I've got a lot of really amazing pictures that. Um, that you will be sort of blown away with when you see them. I hope you will anyway. And I'm so, still. So asking, what are we? What are we saying? Four or five months? We're going to have this out. Can we give people? <laughs> a, I'll I'll push you. I'll will I'll say within six months I'll help you get this thing out. Make sure that it's it's out he there. Sends me messages every week. How are you getting on now? Has it finished? <laughs> I should mention they'll now. I'm going to do another one, Tress. After the, you finish the first, they'll tell you to do another one. So just, okay. just pick a yeah. spot to end <laughs> and yeah, start well that, another. But that's almost like the... I've got all my recorders everywhere. So when I start getting things coming through or my life that I remember, it goes in the recorder for go. the book. So there you are then. 
And um, you've got some photographs. Hopefully you can show some of your photographs, share the screen and show some of your photographs of your orbs. Because you have I don't have anything ready, Grant, because I didn't know that you were doing oh, that. Okay. So Okay. Um, well, put let, uh, one thing I should mention everybody is to put their website. I've opened the chat. I think it's open now. And Deb has put a very interesting comment in there that she's got a photo of a, a green person she wants to show. So people put your websites on there so that people can can link up. Like like I've been on your thing one time, trust your Zoom conference. It goes on for hours. It's like this where <laughs> you sort of host it, and a lot of very interesting people around Europe and all over the world come on and uh, discuss things. So put, put yes, your website got, in the, in the chat been... so people can can find you. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, everybody knows me from Echo Whispers anyway now. Um, we've got a lot of people, but I mean, Grant, you're welcome to come on on a Saturday or anyone yeah. to do the healing because I think people will benefit from this healing that I am now teaching on Earth, you know, wow. to get to know who you are. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, one, one, one more question, then I'll go to uh, maybe Chase is on a cell phone. Somebody's on a cell phone, but I have a question because the, the new book I'm doing is called The Super Bowl. I do a, a, a chapter on animals and you brought up animals. What would be the message from uh, the people from elsewhere on on animals? And are you one of the people? What I've found is that people are able to uh, experiences are able to feed deer they're able, animals aren't afraid of them that would normally be afraid. Chris Bledsoe tells the story of these mallard ducks that are very, very sensitive. They're scared of everybody and they land in his pond. And if anybody else comes on the property, they're not there, they take off. Uh, so do you have that experience where um, you can sort mm -hmm. of interact with animals? You can sort of communicate with animals? And what would be I'm the not... message about animals? Why are they so important in terms of what the, the, the ETs would tell us? Okay, um, where, where I come from, we're all one consciousness with animals, we're all one spirit. So when you come back to us, you could come back as a dog, deer, cat, whatever, cow, sheep. We're trying to educate the humans to, to realize that they've been put into this bubble of eating animals because they make money out of it. It's, a, it's an industry of money and greed. And we shouldn't be eating animals at all. I'll be straight with you. I've been an activist since I was a child trying to communicate with people about what they're doing. And that um, um, it's it, it's all wrong. We, we, we were never programmed to do that. We were programmed to come to Earth and be friends with the animals, to be one with them, to learn how to speak to them. Because I'm a communicator. I can speak with animals. I've done it since I was a baby. It was the first thing I realized I could speak with animals. I spent my life with animals. And uh, I I know when they're not well. I know when there's something wrong. Uh, I, I get an instinct of, I get a feeling when something's not right. I've healed animals. I've kept them alive longer than a vet would ever keep them alive and healed them. And I've had some vets saying to me, how did you do this? You know, because that, we thought that that cat had cancer of the mouth and it's turned out it's not got cancer of the mouth. It's just a cyst that we can actually take off. And I try to explain to them, but it, they, they, they're not, a lot of people aren't educated mentally about, about um, the higher race and what we can actually do. Um, but what the, what the other species, what my species are doing and all the other ones, are trying to open up the humans' minds to the higher realm, to who they really are, to be coming out of the human body, because the human body is a vessel on Earth. Doesn't matter if you're in a different vessel, if you're in a, as I say, another animal's body or a human body, we're all coming in from the source, one consciousness, one being, one energy into different bodies to learn to live together, to learn to how to look after the planet, to learn how to love, because that's the biggest thing that is missing on Earth now is love. They've gone wrong. I mean, I could go into a long spiel about that as well, but we want to turn everything around. As soon as people can realise that hate and war is not the the road to take on earth that we have to turn all around to love and care for animals and realize that there's so many other food sub food food um products and that that you can have instead of eating another body um 
then things things will change. I mean, I've said this before uh, in a few interviews. Uh, way back ten years ago, we sat in a circle and we 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 telepathically um, sort of washed over the world and all the humans, and we asked them all to start going vegan, to start taken off and realizing that you don't need the cow's milk and that there's so many deaths. So, see, we look at this as death. We don't look at this as an animal's died. We look at it as a death, a death to our, our family, our friends. And um, we did this many years ago and it all started taking off, all the veganism, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're bringing children down. We're bringing all the children down. We've got over 7,000 um, hybrids down here just now that are walking amongst us. And they are helping with the, the changes that are going on on the earth as well. And a lot of the, a lot of the, the hybrids have got autistic learning difficulties, um, just wee problems that they have. They may come in, they look a bit deformed. They've come in and they've got a deformity. That's not because of anything else, but because they're different from the humans and they're on a different planet and they've come in. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, but I don't want to take everybody's time up. I mean, I can't get away with it all. Okay. So put, put put your website in the chat and we'll get back to you later. You've got um, um, your Facebook site. You have a lot of your orb photographs on there, right? On Echo Whispers is a lot. I mean, I just put one up recently of the of the um, craft above my house. It's on Echo Whispers. It's a big bright red craft with the white orbs around it. So yeah. that's up there. And there's a few others um, if you wanted to pop on and get some of them and show them. Um, but yeah, um, Echo okay. Whispers has got on it. Good. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the last one here. If it's still Chase here. on Who's on the cell phone? Somebody's on the cell phone. It's not, not here anymore. Oh, iPhone. Yeah. Is that Chase? Yeah, that's me, Grant. Can you hear me? Yeah. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm Chase, and I am nobody of note, and I'm here because they asked, and I don't have a website. I don't promote anything. I You're an orbit. Mostly just so. share privately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm something. I don't know what I am, but uh, yeah, no. Um, that most of the things that I uh, video or, or photograph, are, I don't know what they are. I <laughs> uh, I see them with naked eyes, and they mostly like to fly alongside my car when I drive to things like that. So. In case you're too humble, you you take amazing <laughs> amazing images and video of uh orbs and craft in the sky like pretty much daily. Uh, Jeff is the first person that convinced me that like it's not all dust. So well, really, and I yeah. I think right before you joined us, <laughs> I kind of ratted. A story of yours out a little bit and I think it was around that time that you were starting to be convinced that it wasn't just dust and I had talked <laughs> you into trying to film some of them and you had set one you had set your phone up in your driveway and one kind of flung itself towards your phone and actually knocked it down so Oh yeah, Wait. no, that was actually on the rooftop of my work. I had uh... okay. I knew you had it set <laughs> yeah. up somewhere, but yeah, will you tell that story? I think that's when you had first like I had maybe suggested interacting with them, like talking to it or something like that along those lines. Like we've heard stories um, today, so that would have been a yeah. wow moment for me. <laughs> yeah, I um had a habit of trying to like do stuff and um you know i i tried protocol stuff because i tried protocol stuff uh so i tried protocol stuff and um one of the times that i tried i had set my phone up on this ledge and um in the video you can actually hear the phone start to like vibrate up and down and then it just goes pop and it, it flings into the air and like falls 
uh, down and for like one flash of a second, you see a very, I, I don't know, it's one of those things, it reminds me of a Dorothy Eisen kind of uh, photograph. That's um, but a good I don't usually comparison. get that. Yeah, I don't I like usually that. get that sort of thing though. Chase, yeah, you seem to have more like a lot more like poltergeist, almost seemingly like uh, things moving and disappearing and showing up. And yeah, I I don't know how to talk about my. <laughs> well, you have the one that shows up. You have the one that it's like your work escort. I think it's like it, every time you're driving to work, it shows up <laughs> along the way. That's <laughs> yeah. Um... I actually have uh, a video that happened the night uh, before my birthday. My birthday was the 16th, so it was like my birthday shift because I worked nights. <laughs> so I was heading in. It was February 15th. And I actually, so I had gotten a video of something I thought was a Tic Tac. And I uh, was really disappointed to find out it was one of those stupid uh, like United Airlines planes that has the blue uh, fins and they they look like Tic Tacs and they but it made this really sick video and it looks super anomalous and it was crazy but I ended up debunking myself on that one and I was literally driving to work just like shredding myself inside my head on some like what like why would you even think that you could get something so epic like and I was just tearing myself up about it and like then I look up and this thing comes in and so I have a video of that and it's I've got the moon and Jupiter and a plane which I can track on radar going across the screen and then this big yellow thing that like flies up and is underneath and it I mean the video is two minutes long that it flies next to me in my car right above like trees it flies over a small town and like that's uh, the way I kept telling you. I'm like, you got to pull over. You got to pull <laughs> over. You can't dude, try to record this and drive. <laughs> I, uh, I've i gotten pretty good at it because I do, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I want to mention this. Your sighting up there was also correlating with some sightings I was having down here reported to me in the state. And there was about two or three um, police officers that were tracking these things all throughout about two or three counties as well. So it seems like, I mean, I know we kind of experience these things often, but sometimes there is kind of this seasonal surge of other people starting to notice them as well too. And I think it's because we host groups like this and we all start talking about it and more people become aware, <laughs> but. <laughs> well, I will say, so Drew and I, Drew, how many times have we gotten together now? Three, four? Yeah. They call um, four them Four or five, I, I think, yeah. They call yeah, them we... death stars down here because they have the circle and then a small circle within the circle. And then of course they do their thing, but <laughs> death stars. <laughs> yeah, they look crazy. And actually, so I just got the iPhone 15 Pro and so Pro Max or whatever. And it has a really nice camera for night shooting. So like all the videos I take now, I don't even use flash because it actually makes it interesting if I just leave it off. Um, and I get pretty clear stuff. It's easier to get a point of reference with this camera somehow because it it'll actually like really show all the stars and stuff. So if you keep your phone still, you can track. It's really wild. And yeah, so yeah. We, we formed these orb groups and discussions and get everybody together. So you and Drew and Jeff have kind of been meeting and come together. So yeah, all, all three of you guys jump in and we'll just listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Drew and I have gotten together a couple of times and some really crazy stuff yeah. has happened pretty much every time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we just assume by the time that Jeff it gets in the mix that you know something will just explode but um that <laughs> the the times that we've gotten together we get together in Oklahoma in a place that's like not central to either of us and it, it just goes crazy um and I'd say that's probably 
Go ahead, Drew. No, I was just going to say it. I wanted to mention one one of the times that that Chase and I met. He brought along one of his coworkers who had never seen an orb or any had any kind of sightings before. So I thought that was really special to be able to kind of introduce her. You know, we we had several very nice sightings. I, I think we recorded some of that, um, but it was really cool to be able to experience that with someone. You know, to show someone that for the first time, I guess. And you you've done a lot of that, hadn't you, Chase? Back back home with uh, with some of your coworkers, you you've shown several people now. Their first um, taste of this. Happened. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm into double people with having them have sightings and stuff. So, um, I think that's awesome. Dude. I think that's such a blessing you're giving people, brother. For real. That's a that's a big deal. Yeah, thank you. I think all three of us had sightings this morning, actually. <laughs> Yes, I was gonna mention that you know, we all got morning Grant. They were they were happy we were coming to talk to you, man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to showtime then. Who wants to start first and uh, do uh, a couple minutes each of uh, stuff that people have? Because that's what I think a lot of people want to see is let's see the orbs, let's see the photos, and. Uh, Maybe we'll start with uh, Jeff because Jeff was the one that sort of a, a said he had some new stuff. If you got some stuff lined up, Jeff, you want to do, and then I, I definitely want to see these these beings that uh, Deb Frew has. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, when, I could take up everybody's entire day with showing stuff. So <laughs> feel free to cut me off. And you, you got a site, right? Did you put on the on the chat your site? Uh, yeah. You well, I, I have my account. Instagram, but um, am I allowed to share my screen or someone? Oh, hang on. Hang on. Yeah, shoot. Um, I got to get the share screen here. It's under security. Or uh, let's see. Box screen. Share screen is clicked. Yeah. You should be able to share screen. Okay. Oh, that'd be terrible if we can't figure this thing out. Oh, we'll get it. Allow people to share screen. It says, yeah, yeah, that's what you want. Share video. Wonder if I can. Uh... I can snag it out of our group chat and put it on the Facebook board if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, so put it in the orbology chat or um hmm. there's a Zoom room chat where you're you shared your Instagram. I didn't know if you wanted me to post that to Facebook where we're broadcasting. Have you got the share screen on your thing, uh, Nicole? Um, I don't think I do because I'm on my cell phone. Okay, that should be good now. Okay. Here we go. We good? Oh, there it goes. There we go. Woohoo! Nice uh, green remote. one. <laughs> wow. So they're getting ready for this. I was like. Since I have so much content, it's hard to like package together, like what what's not too much, you know, for something like this. But so, uh, let's see. Start with this is one from this morning, actually. Wow. Oh. All right. So let's see over here. Are you sure it's not a Chinese spy balloon? Or <laughs> Positive. Yeah. And that's <laughs> off your balcony, right? You're shooting off your balcony. This one, I went to go get coffee. Oh, okay. You like it, was, uh, it was just there. I couldn't, when I went, this one, when I was actually filming it, I couldn't see it on my screen, but I could see it uh, visually, like in person. So that's why there's a lot of uh, movement on it. But, um, wow. and so, yeah, what I'll go through, I guess, to just to sort of set an agenda for what I'm showing is uh, I'll go through some videos uh, that are sort of some like, 
newer developments and uh, stuff like that. And then I'll, I'll also show in the mix um, some orbs that uh, the reason I wanted to show them is just because uh, as this whole thing has evolved, um, there's just so much more like bold colors and uh, the behavior is uh, changed in that it's just more bold and more obvious and sort of compelling. And uh, also like within the orbs, there's been like way more detail in regard to like, uh, you know, faces and different patterns and stuff like that, which hopefully you'll see. Uh, this is an orb video from my bedroom uh, that I captured maybe a month ago. And so wow. it's change, changing colors a bit and changing yeah. direction. Uh, wow. That, that's similar to the California one that I got a couple of days ago where it sort of comes right into the camera. It's like, hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. I'll uh, let's see. Go do that. Find another video. On the Smug Mug side, I'm not sure how to organize it to where it's like all the video. Here's all the videos and here's all the photos. So let's see. Yeah, it's a really good one that uh, I got recently, so. Wow, pulsating, yeah. Classic. When you see the super extra giant version of those in the sky, that's wild too that's like a mini yeah. death star is what i'm looking at right now a little mini one yeah <laughs> what's your take on what they are well uh i don't think uh i'll ever know what they actually are or that that yeah. we could even really uh I don't know, me and me and Drew and, Act and Chase were sort of talking about this this past week of like, you know, obviously no one knows 100% for sure what all of this is. And yeah. so we can only talk about our experiences and, you know. Do you think uh, it's getting more complex as we go but, along? That it starts with simple orbs and they more complex and they, they just show oh, yeah. up more and more. It's almost like everything in reality is this idea that uh, Donald Duck, Dr. Donald Hoffman said, everything's a desktop icon. You're never going to actually see actual reality. You're only looking at it like a desktop icon and that it can right. morph, it can change, it can do whatever. And it just gets more complex. And I call it the theory. Wow. It's just trying to get you to go, what the heck is life about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. And it's interesting talk, you know, with a bunch of us in the panel here have already talked about, uh, you know, being musicians and the, the flow state. I was actually watching a uh, interview with a guy, an artist, uh, Alex Gray, who I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. He does all the artwork for the band uh, Tool, so it's a lot of psychedelic kind of uh, Yay. stuff. Yeah. Anyway, in this in this interview, um, he was being asked about his art and like how he you know sort of gets his ideas and what his approach is, and he said something that was just amazing to me that. Uh, um, he was saying how like, you know, that true creation and uh, new ideas, you know, come from this realm of uh, that's beyond us. And that essentially, you know, when you're in the flow state, it's almost like uh, God is working through you. God or love itself is working through you so that you're, you're a, you're a conduit of, uh, of God almost. And, uh, um, I guess it's, 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 uh, something where it's, uh, you know, trying to show heaven on earth basically. And so I think like, you know, when, uh, any new ideas, whether that's inventions or songs or art pieces, anything like that, uh, comes from this place of an unknown. And I think that's actually accessible to everybody, but I also think the orb photos and, uh, you know, the phenomena itself is a reflection of that same thing, you know, like uh, the phenomena or whatever it is, is is sort of revealing itself through our photos in a way. So it's almost 
same kind of thing. I'm blathering on here, but I'll can can you go back to those uh the ones with the wings? Great. That's that's always been a yeah, uh, like this one. Yeah, and the ones up above, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, anytime we talk about music oh, wow. and the Yeah, there's one. That's one Ooh, that two gets thumbs labeled. up. It's called two thumbs up, that one. Yeah. Those are also they get labeled as those the bugs all the time. The rods? Yeah. The rods. So I have a theory on the yeah. rods. I don't I don't think they're wings like these right. off the sides. I think they're heads. And so I don't know if you see my cursor. Yeah, yeah. But I think like that's an eye, that's an eye, that's an eye, that's an eye. So it's essentially oh, wow. almost three or four heads. Yeah. Because wow. yeah, had some of those that. where you had different numbers of on the top and the bottom. So if there were wings, there would be proportional three on the top, three on the bottom, and and you don't get the proportional. They're they're always right. like numbers. There's the thumbs up ones. Yeah. Oh, that's too cool. And so this is wow. like indoors. See, I think wow. these blue blue things aren't wings. I think they're heads. But I don't know 100%. Uh, let's see what this video is. Wow, Ooh, there's a couple. Woo! You know, there's different ways I think we all describe what you said you were rambling on. I don't think you were rambling. And I like to bring up, um, Grant, you made me think of it earlier when you were talking about uh, violin. But Jimi Hendrix talked about the electric light beings and you know he was played his guitar backwards and upside down and with the wrong hand and couldn't yeah. read or write music but these beings you know gave him his musical genius yeah. and so I wonder if those beings were like humanoid shaped beings or if they were like these sort of orbs that inspired or manifested themselves while he was in flow states so yeah yeah interesting and I think the the orbs whoa, whoa, the look at that eyes. holy cow yeah whoa yeah I want to you can almost see like eyeballs yeah there was like a that right there. It's like it's almost like a moon going around a planet. <laughs> that's oh, that's Death Star-ish too. There's de yeah, there's definite rotation. Yeah, too. Um, but in yeah. regard to also like what you asked earlier, what I think it is. So I think, I think every person has a essentially a soul family or a soul group. Yeah. That's that's with them from uh, in every uh, incarnation, every life. And I think, you know, could, uh, can I ask a question? Could you see this yeah. when, when you were filming? it? Yeah, yeah. Most of it uh, like this. Yes. Wow. Sometimes, the, sometimes the orbs are just a little quick to see uh, while you're filming. That is spectacular. That's one of the best I've ever seen. Because you don't normally see them that clear during the day or like that obvious. That was. Yeah, this one to me seemed like a almost like a plasma type type mm -hmm. being. He has That's tons of these, Grant. Wow. Yeah. People call them the plasmoids, you know. What? And, and everybody in Chicago is busy trying to not have an accident driving along at 60 miles yeah. an hour. They don't see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I don't know. Man, it's, kinda, it, I hate even bringing it up, but that shape even looked like tentacle-ish, you know, from mm -hmm. afar. Like these jellyfish things that people say they see. Yeah. Oh, uh, for here's, sure, yeah. here's here's getting into your weird stuff here. This is like wild. Yeah, yeah. This one is I have a video of this, but it was it's essentially like uh overlaid uh at each frame of the video showing like the full motion of it, but I don't know, to me it seems like some sort of trans dimensional uh it's like when you see the rainbows and the rods. That's what it rem reminds me of. Or as yeah. orbs pulsate, but that seemed like a extreme close up of it. Like, yeah, look at Rainbow Road. Totally. <laughs> Jeff, is that the one with the rainbow like bird thing was in the photo that you took? Rainbow bird. Yeah, I can probably find it. I'm sure I have a snapshot of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that oh. sounds like a thunderbird. It's yours. Oh, I like, the, I like this one a lot. Check this out. <laughs> Where it's flashing. Oh, oh, oh. It flashes, yeah. <laughs> wow. Whoa. <laughs> And it sort of pushes it sideways, the outflash. And most of these two, I'm I'm like zooming in to the orb, obviously. Uh, yeah. You can see this one. I'm seeing like an eyeball there. And so I, t I tend to see like a bunch of different faces within each orb rather than like one singular. I'll, uh, let me find that one on the stairs actually real quick get oh. that get that out of the way I build that suspense so good <laughs> yeah there's there is oh the green oh my god <laughs> and you've got a lot that, to have the stairway with nothing there so it's not like it's something on the stair right right you've got a lot right. you, this is how I was saying you're shooting from your balcony and this is sort of yeah, the we background got it. can you zoom in on that as close I've zoomed in on that so much yeah oh my god <laughs> so yeah there's like a being right here obviously and then i think there's yeah. these are little beings here down to the left yeah, i just like want to go sit on the steps <laughs> it's like it's like hell they're going for halloween the mother and the, the kids <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> really but yeah there's no uh there's no glass in between me and and the staircase uh no and in the show some left. others perspective that that show that that area where you've got all sorts of other stuff going on with the, and you can see the balcony, but you can see that all this stuff in the sky. Wow, this, yeah, that, that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, wow. yeah. This one's I think, wild. Yeah, there's a rod and there was a beam in the one with the staircase too, a horizontal beam instead of a vertical mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> and so this one, I, to me, I see a being like right here. Like there's That's an crazy. eye, there's an eye, maybe some ears. And this white thing is like going around its neck almost. Even above it too. And then, yeah, there's a white one here and then the same white square shape here. And there's two pretty like prominent rods right there. What, you know? Yeah. It's amethyst and it's, yeah. That's like the crescendo. And, and this is not yeah. a one-off. You've got hundreds that look like this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, balcony. But this yeah, kind of yeah. weird, sort of misty stuff and the orbs and yeah, yeah. Oh, there it goes. This is the one I had the uh we were looking at earlier where I was showing you the heads. Yeah. I texted you, uh Jeff, the picture that I was talking about that you had of the bird. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Perfect. There are more uh, rods. Let's see. There's By the way, I don't know why it says buy photo on this. I just created this smug mug account and you can put images on and sell them or whatever. But uh, try and get into some more detailed faces here. And you got to show a couple of your through. beam ones as well. To show the this beam thing, you're showing like a good rainbow spectrum of their colors. So I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. And Grant, you know, I can't go through an orb discussion without bringing up um, the story of Joe Firmage's blue orgasmic orb. I don't know that, that story. That gave him, a, you don't know that? I need to send it to you. It, I think. The orbgasm. Yeah, the orbgasm. <laughs> and it, I think he said it came through his chest. 
And then that's when it appeared to him as an angel giving him a message. But yeah, when it came through his body, he described it as being an oh. orgasm. So oh. I call them yeah. orbgasms now. There you go. And that was the tall being that was t touching the ceiling that after? I believe so. It, yeah. it came as the blue orb, which, you know, the blue comes up a lot. Like Travis Walton's beam was blue that hit him. Yeah. Uh, the Joe Firmage blue orb. Yeah. So. Wow. Who saw the tubular bell? That skinwalker was that Latasky. Uh, he, yeah, he, des it had he described it as metallic, but I wonder if it would have been at night if it would have shown a color like Tress described. You know, well, that was the one that was on the cover of um, the music for The Exorcist. It was had right. this hidden meaning behind it. It was sort of like. Well, you know, we watch how these orbs or rods sometimes seem, you know, like a shape or a knot. And I'm just wondering if that was like a still shot representation of something more like we see these pulsating shaped things. And what the other thing that Lukatsky brought up in that interview um, <laughs> after he saw the thing was that he said the OSAP program has a catalog of 200,000 sightings, and he said not two are the same. Every single one is different, which that changes everything. If, if I, And that's what you're seeing here, is mm -hmm. there are no real two that are identical. They're, they're, when you take a closer look, they're actually different, almost like every leaf on, there's 200,000 leaves on a tree, and they look the same, but every single leaf is different. Every snowflake is different. Every single person is different, even, um, you know, uh, identical twins have different fingerprints different hair patterns and stuff uniqueness is is the thing in the in the universe even though you have cells duplicating themselves uniqueness is the pattern that's when i say beautiful <laughs> and and i think because they're so fluid they're changing so fast right yeah. that mm -hmm. they they don't hold the shape the same right because they're always you know changing and fluid and we're just capturing a snip of a moment on it. Yeah, the way I've written it up in this latest book is the idea that what we do is is the universe is a verb. It's alive, it's conscious, it's it's all connected. And that what we do as science is we break it down and we change everything into nouns. It's inanimate, it's just a thing. And there's small things make up bigger things which make up bigger things. There's no nothing. And that's the mistake we make is turning things into nouns. Everything is alive, everything is conscious. And everything is connected to the one. I will toss in that I think it was three weeks ago there was an announcement, and we're we're talking about light essentially here, you know, uh, with these orbs. Well, for the first time ever, we have slowed down light in some laboratory experiments. Yeah. So, and the whole idea is, can data be transferred via light? You know, can something go faster than the speed of light? Well, it's kind of a big deal if we can slow light down, you know, manipulate yeah. it that way. So, I don't know. These orbs seem to communicate in inspirational ways. Are we on the cusp of, you know, folding these two worlds together? Is there information coming through these lights? They some they do slow down and speed up for us. So really interesting. I'll send it to you guys. Yeah. I think it was in uh popular science. Jeff, <laughs> what are you using for uh an app to slow these video down? Because I I use uh yeah, I use one called Luma Fusion. Okay. And I think it's like maybe 16 bucks or something like that. Okay. But it's just a really easy app to use to where you can uh, zoom in and slow down and uh, track that's along, I mean. like move with it. Yeah, that's the what orb, I need. Uh...
Um, and maybe I can show some of the beams here. Oh, good one. This was uh, maybe a month back. It was like maybe 200 feet above the house. <clears throat> Yep, those are the ones I get videos sent down here too. Yeah, Drew and Chase get these all the time as well. Yeah, Chris Bussell talks about with his orbs that he can sense when they're there, when to film. Do you get any of that kind of stuff where you know sort of when to film or you sense them? You sort of yeah, it's 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 a bunch of different things. Sometimes I can I can sort of sense when to go out and film. Sometimes the sky just sort of looks right i don't know how to make sense of that like sometimes it just seems like something's gonna happen and like the sky almost looks a certain way to me uh to where i like i know i'm gonna see something pretty pretty soon after um but also too like when i'm when i'm filming in my room i don't know that it's uh so much that i'm sensing something or that like i do it at the same time each each night uh in the same place. Um, I don't know if it has to do with that, um, but also too, I, uh, especially early on, I was uh, getting into like CE5 and uh, your book, Contact Modalities. And uh, um, I guess what I've like, not concluded, but like the, what works for me in order to like manifest something to happen or have an interaction is uh, what it really comes down to is love for me and channeling that into manifesting what I, you know, an interaction, something I want to see. So for example, I'll think of um, like what it's like to hug my mom, like that feeling of, of love, yeah. the actual love feeling. And then I'll put that strong emotion into um, the desire to see something or have a, have an interaction. And that's, that's been really powerful. Yeah, I remember you talking at Deb's event, you talked about that. that yeah, event. yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes, too, when I start filming, they're just already there, too, so. Um, I've heard similar dis descriptions from other people. You know, I think I've, I've spoken with Chase about this kind of in-depthly, just different ways to engage and interact and a lot of it is, you know, that intention and I fumble my way through a lot of it too. You know, it's stuff that I used to kind of like scoff and laugh at. And then next thing I know, I'm like, bam, okay, that's what people were meaning. I can't like roll my eyes at this anymore. Yeah, and, yeah. And it does build and grow. I, I've even like yelled and cussed, you know, and get all like pissy and angry in my interactions. And that's when, you know, you get the downloads of them laughing back at you or <laughs> <laughs> thinking well, you're sure. ridiculous. I, one orb fiasco I went on was I had the daylight sighting and multiple people in the county that I'm in were also seeing this thing. And much like these things happen, like you were saying, it's like a familiar feeling or you get called out or something. The exact same thing started happening the very next day at the same time. And I was like, oh, I'm going to see this thing again. And um, wow. Yeah. And it's just like <laughs> there's all these layers that happen with it sometimes. And it sends you on these wild goose chases. So I ended up and I was receiving these downloads and the only way I could describe it, it, I was also exploring like ritual dance and tribal contact modalities and how to get in these altered states like naturally. <laughs> and it pretty much told me that I wasn't going to see it until I danced like an idiot. <laughs> so like in the middle of the night, I'm like flipped on the headlights of my car and I like danced in front of my headlights and went and sat back down in my car, looked out my windshield. And then it was just like, flipping fireworks and, wow. and all I heard was laughter and it's like shooting off in the distance and all these yeah it was amazing and I was like that's what I get I have to like 
let go enough and act like an idiot and totally. not be afraid of that side. And they you wanted know, you in that childlike state. Yeah. <laughs> that was also the same spot I got all freaked out one night because I was more than sure um, three grays were there with me. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've only ran twice from the phenomenon. That was one. And I think Bigfoot, I encountered Bigfoot and I ran and ran and fell and peed my pants and ran some more. <laughs> wow. I was only like 16 for the Bigfoot thing. I was really like just scared. I shouldn't have been out there alone. <laughs> See if you can find some uh, beams and uh, beams, and then let's um, yeah get um, Deb through to show these being photos, and then uh, Janet, if you've got your some of your stuff set up, you've got the famous one I always show with the with the mist, where you got half the half the the frame is got this mist green granular mist, and the other half is completely clear. And of course, then somebody come up with this crazy explanation. Well, you're taking a piece of glass and glued uh, sand to it. And <laughs> yeah. I'll see if I can find that. Yeah. Trying to pull up these beams. The beams. Yeah, this is. Hey, Grant, um, if you want me to show some stuff, yep. would you mind uh, bumping me up? I've been awake since seven o'clock yesterday. Okay. OK, let's go with you next then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is, the beam. <laughs> this is wild stuff. Those are the ones that I call the spaghetti beams. It's like it's just so much. And Teresa and Phoenix has these kind of things as well. It's just like wow. Who has the beams where they're going like horizontally through the forest? And there's the video, and it's like uh, Chris. Urban. Chris had one there where this thing was going through the forest. It may have been the one you were thinking of. Maybe. I, Teresa has a number where they're swirling around. Yeah, here. Wow. There's the the most, That's the other thing that I noticed is the one in the middle there. That you start getting these beams that people started saying me the beams where it was like a rainbow beam where yeah. you know, all the different colors through the beam. Yeah, this was three. A lot of them have the one. And, and the other thing that I noticed is I read a chapter on light where it's it it's not going down to the ground. So it's not coming from somewhere. It's contained. And Bob Bigelow talks about that as well, where the light seems to stop at a certain point when it should continue through. It's almost like it's a it's an entity in itself. It's not uh, being projected yeah. from anywhere. See, there's the balcony again. You can see the balcony. There's nothing on the balcony, but you have the, mm -hmm. the, the beam and the the weird sky. Here's a, uh, here's one I like a lot, actually. This is a, it's one where I took a picture and you can sort of see like, uh, it's almost as if they're like wrapped in mm -hmm. like a, a white, like you can see like, here's the middle. And as if you can imagine this white is like wrapping them up like a, a burrito almost. Oh, yeah. It looks Maybe like I a see, like little cape. faces inside. It looks like a cape with a really tall collar. It looks like the yeah, northern yeah. lights. Looks like the northern lights to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. That wow. Okay. <sighs> Jeff, can you see anything with the naked eye on these pictures or just on the film? Uh like so like for that that one yeah so that yeah one. you you can sort of see like a like a i don't know like a like a haze in a way yeah i've yeah. seen the northern lights in chicago and they don't that's they don't look like that <laughs> and then chase there's that uh rainbow bird you were yep wow. Woo. phoenix thunderbird yeah, rainbow bird. Uh -huh. But yeah. It's almost like you've got a style, like the stuff you're getting, like the one there on the left, the top left there. 
It's almost you have a style of photos. I'm going to show a few of tresses later on. You can see her. She has a different style. You can see these a theme, almost like yours have a theme and hers have a theme. Yeah. See like that. That is just incredible. How do you uh, how do you explain that? It's like wow. Yeah. yeah, it's like a square with I don't know. Jeff, like Jeff, see where you've got your um your stairway going down there, right? Yeah. You've got, your stairway. You've got a portal going across. Yeah. The of your stairway. So you're going to be getting a lot of energies coming through that portal. Now the portal is going to be like when you saw the green being standing on the stair, they were going into the portal. It was a big white screen light yeah. energy. That's a portal and wow. they come in and out of there. But you won't see it all the time. You'll possibly see it when there's a lot of energy and um, things going on around there. Wow. And see, that's why we need to give those coordinates to Jimmy and even back it up with it being probably on this mathematical grid that he can lay out. Because I think I like Tress's impression of that. Wow. I've thought that as well. That's why I want to go and sit on the steps. Like, wow. yeah. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. That's, that's There's incredible. a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. That's almost like art. That's just beautiful. Like the colors, almost like psychedelic colors. I think yeah. Jess, you were talking about that before, where, where the colors aren't the same type of colors that you normally see. And right. And see that my group of pals that visit um, the mounds that are all over the Midwest. Like, I th we get pictures closer to this stuff. And I, yeah, they're on this grid as well. So I, you know, there's so much from Skinwalker Ranch that they leave out or they're acting like they're rediscovering and going through like. Yeah, well, that's the I thing know, you get. I know Brandon Fugel has to pretty much redo everything Bigelow did if he wants to get his own stuff. So we're going on that journey. But when Bigelow shows his stuff finally or it gets released, yeah. I think we're going to see things like this there yeah but the stuff you see at skinwalker is nothing like they got the one orb and they're all getting excited that this, this one orb oh. and they go oh, look at the orb and then oh, they get the one I with mean. the they're, they call they're... the light pillar they get one remember they had a whole show on the light pillar well here's hundreds of light pillars i mean it's like this they're is you're way behind the, the narrative screen. and that light pillar did look like a spider web to me in some shots so i was confused by that but you know how television goes um that's yeah. I want to see the the real deal video, not the like made for TV. Yeah, here, look at this. Like Skinwalker is in downtown Chicago here. This this <laughs> one I I took in uh, Australia actually. Oh uh, oh yeah, that's right. You maybe you showed. This yeah, before, so yeah. Well, so first it was this craft was here, and it's like a a like a triangle almost spinning around a like a center point of yeah like a center axis. And so I was I was filming that one, wondering, you know, what the fuck? And then <laughs> and then uh I looked down basically <laughs> and I'm I'm looking at it at my phone and then I looked up and then uh there was this circular one. That's gotta be one of the better daytime videos ever, Jim. Oh thanks, dude. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is wild. It, it has that wobble that everybody yeah. talks about yeah you know, when they talk about the real deal ones the falling leaf thing yeah where it's sort of flowing back and forth which i saw in 75 76 or that it's like that weird tilt we see in the now famous gimbal video you know yeah or what's the one in Mexico where it flies like behind that building and it's like woo, like wobbling like a hubcap? Yeah. Can can off. nobody can nobody see the craft above that? Above this one? Above oh, that. I do now that you pointed to it. It's a it craft looks... above it. <laughs> where? Just above <laughs> it. Just above. Yeah. Above, it's, yeah. above the, the, the you see the shadow of it. There's a craft there's... above that. You'll always find when you see them, there's a craft nearby because they come down from the crafts. You mean like <laughs> up, up here? 
Uh huh. It's just up round there. It's just all around there. Wow. Yeah, that's. You notice there. here. See how it like it'll blink back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what's is it doing? It's just showing off. It's just saying, "Look at this." <laughs> Yeah, it just wants the public to see them. Yeah, it's, not it's really trying doing to anything. More, more people aware that they're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you hey and... guys, there's there's this new show that popped up on Netflix, and I know it's kind of a comedy, but it's called Resident Alien. It's supposed to be, and good. he's yeah. here. And only children can see him, like certain children can yeah. see him in his real oh. form. And I'm I'm only like two episodes into this show, and I oh. I'm dying. I know yeah, we all need a little comic relief with this sometimes, but then the Hollywood yeah. Disclosure Alliance is really doing a lot of interesting things with film and scripts and projects, yeah. like trying to make sure that there is like, you know, no matter what genre, like there is some accuracy from our community that's making its way. So yeah, be on the lookout for those shows. There goes the steps and the green guy again. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one, Jeff. I've stared Thank at you. that picture so many times. I feel like I've uh, biolocated into it. So it worked. It worked. Everybody's seen it. It's. They want you to t see it, film it, share the message. I've whispered about it. Honestly, I've been afraid to show too many people because it's not mine. You know, I've wanted you to show it publicly for the first time, but. The oh, few yeah, sure trusted way. people I'm... I've given a peek of it to, it's like they've pooped their pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let Chase cool. uh, show his so he can take a nap. And then we'll go to Deb Fru for her. Did you get photos at that at that uh, 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 Skywatch, Deb? That's what I'm going to show. Okay. Woohoo. Did Chase fall asleep? No, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> um, You're up. I'm check. I'm trying to see how I switched the uh, shares. On me, it's a little green uh, thing on the bottom. Oh, there you go. Sounds like you're right. looks like you're sharing. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, so this is just some stuff I threw together, Grant, because uh, I didn't know. How much I'd need or yep. whatever. We might have a lot of time to go into some of the weird stuff you probably see on the screen. Um, so the first video up here is 25 seconds or so. I've reviewed it with some people and tried to check it out. And all the pictures you see subsequently there are uh, screenshots from the video. I don't know what this was. I was just driving and I saw it turn on and then uh, I tried to grab a, a video. Uh, but it was pretty big, and it was pretty low. Um, and then it just You're in Wisconsin, right? Uh, this was, yeah, this was uh, by Belleville. Okay. Um, and then, boom, this goes. But if you watch it, it just. Wow. It uh, so, yeah, it just disappeared. Um. And these are some like zoomed in frame grabs of me trying to get any kind of idea of what this thing is or was. Um, I don't know, it's pretty low. It's really yeah, big. I've had other people like, you know, they refer the Goldens and you know, some people call these the light vehicles like Merkabas. There's and it could be because I I don't have um, <laughs> theories really. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, I've heard a lot. Um, all of it. Yeah, so this was they're, they're the small crafts, by the way, but they're actually much bigger than that. But they can make them smell smaller. This was a plane in the next night that was flying into the Madison Airport, and I was a lot closer to Madison. Um, but I did that because it had similar weather conditions and similar lighting. And so I just wanted to show the way a plane actually looks in a, a similar uh, thing on the same, you know, 
uh, same phone. Um, so you can see it doesn't really look uh, like that. Uh, this whole series of stuff is a weird download thing that I got, and we probably don't have one to go into that. But basically, uh, this night happened, and I got a weird download. I don't know what any of it means. I uh, really understand it or have theories on that, but it was stuff that was flashing into my head, and then I went and laid down on the couch. And somehow I ended up listening to these, and, and I started seeing all these flashes of light, and then I opened my eyes and kept realizing, like, oh, my eyes are not open already, and then um, I had closed my eyes, and I saw all this light, and there was just, like, gray swirling mist everywhere, and then I could see trees, and I could see all these birds flying out of these trees. And long story short, I went back to bed after this occurred for like 30 minutes. Uh, and then when I woke up in the morning, I went out to smoke on my porch and it was the like the vision that I was seeing. And I just picked up my camera and took one picture and right smack in the middle of the picture is a bird just like the ones I was seeing fly out of the trees. And then um, I showed this picture to my fiance and her jaw dropped and she told me that she believed me because three days ago she had a meditation and she saw like this this image in her meditation. Um, so that was just a weird thing. Um, this was the birthday night, um, February 15th. So uh, first I saw this, and I don't know, I can't verify if that is something anomalous or not, um, but I saw it, and it really made me feel like, oh my god, I'm going to see something. And then that's, uh, a little while later, that's when this thing came. So at the top here, you can see the moon. Um, you can see... Uh, the plane flashing as it's flying over. You can see something rising up to the left of the moon. I'm not sure if that's another plane or something else. And then this bigger thing that's flying really low over the city. And that's what has flown up next to me. Um, they do this a lot. Wow. And this is like a two-minute video. So, um, but I do get uh, you know, closer in on it. Um, and it, you know, it goes on like this for quite some time. Oh, sorry. Uh, and it, uh, you know, I mean, it just, it just flies next to me. That's, you know, the whole video is, is that, um, See, like I say, it's it's pretty low, um, I and I can't find one. Chase. I tracked one with the troopers one night for like six hours. It was ridiculous. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, I so keep telling I... them it's one of theirs. Like this one's yours. They, I don't have <laughs> them convinced yet. I'm like, it's this one's yours. <laughs> this this was in between. Monticello and Laris, Wisconsin. Um, and then, like, I finally was like, uh, it's just not going away, so whatever. I'm going to put my phone down now. And um, I realized, oh, it's going to leave. So then I took this video to try to show it uh, actually moving away. Um. That's that. So that's that's the stuff that that I have just from recently that I haven't been able to explain with radar or some kind of um, conventional. Do you have any of you and Drew together doing your thing, or does Drew have um, them? A couple of Drew. This is well. The thing is, I don't know which ones of these are good and which ones of these are not good. Um, so we got the laser pointer there to, so you can find what we're 
looking at. Um, That's always a special moment, I think, with all of us Orbis, if we do the laser and circle it and then it completely changes direction and goes the other way. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, definitely not a satellite. This was the one uh, the, one of the times that uh, he was talking about. He actually brought a friend of his from Texas and so we had uh, his friend and his wife and um, actually I had in Ryan Bledsoe, the Omi's Discord, um, I had a live going on in a, like a public chat room there from his uh, group of people on with us too and they were all looking at the sky so we communicated like what direction what degree we were looking at the sky and what constellations we were looking at and stuff so we could all kind of focus on the same region and had people and from see, a couple different places in the world and stuff yeah that's mm -hmm. fun that's my group does that with Jimmy Blanchett too and he'll focus his uh digital earth to moon beam bounce satellite messages and focus on our you know locations where we're at but yeah lots of groups will do that like we did a group of us down here at Cahokia Mound and a group up there in Wisconsin at Aslan or how as Aslan I always say it wrong but and Aslan. then the fun happens as to land yes Yeah, um, this night we had probably, what, like 50 orbs or something, Drew? Something. It was amazing. It was, yeah, it was a lot. Wow. Um, amazing. Do you have any of the videos of, of the the drone light things that we always see together that that just kind of hover on the horizon? Do you have any of those, Chase? Um, I think I do, actually. Uh That's the one, Grant, like when you describe uh, Charlie Red Star, when the camera crew finally gets it, you know, has it, you know, like taken off. That's what I imagine some of these are like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the, yeah, here's the one. <laughs> Look how low those are, guys. Look how close. Oh. Chinese spy balloon. <laughs> well, wait on. Swamp gas, bro. Get it, get it together. Um, I think we have one with like three of them, and there's one that's under investigation from our state, you guys. Uh, or there, I can't say under investigation. They had one in the air. It was the Illinois National Bottle Cap Balloon Brigade, <laughs> and they're working <laughs> with the FBI to, you know resolved that there was theirs was not a chinese spy balloon <laughs> I, I will say this is pretty close to tinker air force base mm -hmm. so these low flying things we don't know but they do seem to follow both of us back to uh our respective states <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd never seen something <laughs> quite like that before ever since i got back to dallas i've been seeing them in dallas now Oh, it's this scary hitchhiker effect. Yes. <laughs> the, the chase effect. The chase hitchhiker effect. There it goes. Two of them there. I joke, about, one over. I joke about the hitchhiker effect with me. As I, I told you guys, I went up and met uh, Jim Penniston, and I joked about shaking the hand that touched the craft of unknown origin. And yeah, honestly, like there's so many synchronicities after I met Jim and Grant, too. <laughs> yeah. We do uh, it together. Believe... <laughs> we're, we're facing south here, mostly. Um, that's usually where like the direction that we look when we get together. Um, but yeah, we, we, we had a lot of weird stuff. Drew and I saw a thing. Uh, we don't know what we saw, but we saw a thing and it disappeared in front of the both of us. Uh, yeah. It, 
you, you, you know, we've, we've all, seen, yeah, if, if you don't mind, yeah, we've all seen incredible things and I know we all have, but one of the nights and when we were kind of wrapping up our sky watch and I remember even Chase saying, yeah, Drew, I think the, I think the light show's done for tonight. So we were kind of packing it up and we saw this shadowy figure. I'll, I'll call it a man um, for now walking by us and keep in mind Oklahoma, you know, in the area where we were is as flat as a tabletop, you know, and it, it's not a busy place. There's not a lot of cars on the road and so forth. And we saw this kind of shadowy figure walking by us at a distance, you know, not, not super close, but not all that far either. And uh, something about the way he was moving, it was moving just looked off. I can't describe it better than that. It just didn't look quite right. We both picked up on it. So we were both watching this this figure walking by. And at one point in time, correct me if I remember this right or not, Chase, but it walked past a tree and it took a series of like three or four steps. And with each progressive step, it seemed to be shrinking. Uh, so this, yeah. this person looked like it was shrinking. It took one more step and just completely disappeared, y'all. It was gone. And uh, we both yeah. ran down to the area where we were walking. And there was not a trace of it. There were no shrubs or trees or anything in that area for, for something to hide. Like, there was nowhere to go. And it was just gone. Here you go, my tech issues. For both of us, the, the shadow people, they pop up a lot too. You reminded both of us. Was yours wearing a hat? You reminded both of us of the way. Hmm. I don't remember a hat. Do you, Chase? I don't remember wearing a hat. No, I didn't. That's the weirdest part about it was you couldn't tell what it was. I mean, it was moving so weird and it was in a field. The weirdest part was it was. So there was this field and it was really overgrown and it was cold and wet. And there was this intersection right there. Like it could have like, and we yeah. could not figure out at first when we saw it, like, why is this thing? Why is this person walking in this field and why are they walking so weird? And then it like moved. It looked like it was like walking on top of the weeds and then like sinking down into them and like, doing just the weird and we were both just like what is that and like we both kind of were like we should film this but at the same time we're like we're not just gonna weirdly film some dude at 12 30 at night or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> did so it, uh, did it came across the eyes? field no dude so no. this was the great so then it crossed this highway and as it stumbled back and forth at one point i was like drew is it riding a bike it was moving so weird i don't even know how to and yeah. like and then we were like, no, it's not. But then it like it, it as it was finishing crossing the highway, a car like drove behind it and it didn't even seem to illuminate it. It just was yeah. black and like and then it came up onto like the sidewalk and started walking up the sidewalk towards us. And we were like, Oh shit. And like uh we kind of looked at each other like and just kind of confirmed, like, yeah, we're down to deal with this. How are we gonna deal with this? And then so then we decide, like, without saying anything, we're just going to go for it. So we started walking towards it, and it turned around and started walking away. And when it did, we stopped, and then it kept moving. And then it, like, yeah, like, shrank. Up, and then it just, poof, disappeared. Like, I it, heard the it was shrinking pretty thing. weird. I've heard the shrinking thing before. I like that. I, all the experiences I really hear are positive with with those things, even though they sound scary and all shadowy and things like that. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was amazing. It's like I, I'm thinking it's one of those things on Jeff's stairs. Right, yeah, that would make sense. Jeff sent him. Jeff sent it to us. <laughs> yeah, this is the one of the drone things he's talking about too, and we can't figure. Like these are so weird. 
Um, a couple of times they'll, they'll float right over our heads, you know, and they're not that high off the ground. Even when they do, you, you can't make out what they are. You can't make out, like, there's no physical structure. It just appears like a bright light. Sometimes they'll, they'll blink off and on. Sometimes they don't. We've seen them disappear. Like I say, even when they fly right over you, you can't really tell what you're looking at. Look, look at that. Yeah. And, like, it's, I mean, it's right around uh, the building. Drew, by the way, I was going to say you got like a crazy robot voice going on. <laughs> okay, oh, nice. good. I thought it was just me and tech issues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm right there with you, Chase. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, that's that big one. Remember, Drew? Uh, we like turned around and it came down out of the clouds. Yeah. Yeah, it was that one was really big and bright. That that one was pretty crazy. But you'll have to forgive our cameraman. He only has one eye. Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the laser pointer would really ups the game. I have to say, everyone, if you're gonna try to film some shit in a team, definitely the laser pointer is where it's at. It shows up really well on the on the camera and helps you get like dial right in. What? What color laser do you have? A green one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just in case you don't know, you can't point them in place. Right. Don't be yeah. stupid. Um, so, yeah, that's everything that I have that I. Oh, there's still. Okay. So there's a second one there. Remember what Tress said, when you see the little one, there's always the big, big one, too. <laughs> yeah, there's a big one there. I'll be watching it as it's been flying around. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the little one's the distraction and the big one just kind of hangs out. <laughs> like Grant says, the wow one. <laughs> the same thing happens in um, uh, photographs of experiencers who have the black helicopters. Tony yeah. uh, Vince from London showed me, and then I said, "What's that other thing there?" And he said, "Oh, that's a UFO." And then showed me another black helicopter another time. There's a UFO in the photo, and then uh, what's his name from Wisconsin sent me one. It had a, uh, a UFO following this uh, uh, black helicopter, and then it's like, "Is anybody got a black helicopter photo without a UFO in it?" <laughs> <laughs> well, and oh, actually, Grant, I do. I have a black helicopter video without a UFO. <laughs> There's a close look. There may be one in there. It's like, it's just weird. <laughs> I I start to even look at it like, Grant, you said the theory, wow. And, you know, sometimes you can spot that distortion where the other one is. But it's almost like you see the one that's making all the noise and attention and showing off. And it's like when you're staring at one of those photograph dot things where you have to relax your eyes and let the image come out. Like that's how you end up. You have to like relax your mind, and then you can see the bigger one. Or like, once somebody points it out, it. you can see it. There was yeah. one. The famous film that got me going was was called the Seek the White film in 1975. That's where this guy is there. The the TV crew from the TV station is there, and they got this thing on the ground. And the the guy says, "Next time this thing flares up, I'm gonna photograph so we get something on film." And as he pushes the trigger, this thing jumps up in the sky. And then it flies across the sky, and then he stops the camera at twelve, at twelve o'clock, so he can get some frame of reference with stars in the background and stuff like that. And when they get these these pictures back, there's two six-inch pieces, and the first one is this thing jumping from ground level to three thousand feet in the air in seven eighths or one eighth of a second. And then the, at twelve, he stops the, the frame, and on there. Uh, when the TV crew broke it all down, they had an eight minute special where they were showing it frame by frame. There was what we called echoes. So there was the object and there was seven other objects echoing along, following it beside this thing. We call it echoes. So you can see this goes back an awful long uh, period of time that there, there's always a, if you start looking, there's a second object 
in the frame, but it's not quite as clear as the other one. Wow. And then what happened with these two six inch pieces, I went to the guy and I said, can I get a copy? And he said, no, I can't give you a copy. Every time I make photos, make copies of these pieces of film, they disappear. And then finally I convinced him and he said, okay, so he made a, he had a second generation copy. He made me a third generation copy of this original uh, 12 inches of very famous film taken in May of 1975. And then uh, when I sold my house, you think I could find that film? And there is not a film. There's a guy out of Wisconsin, I know, out of Pennsylvania who actually uh, showed it. Uh, it's on UFO cover up live. No, it's on um, UFOs that has begun. Jacques Vallée narrates the film of this object. That's the only place I know where this film is. There's piles of copies. And as this guy said, every time I make copies, they disappear. And mine was on a six inch metal reel. How do you lose a six inch metal reel? It was just is bizarre. That, is that the one who didn't you send a photo of Charlie Red Star? And did you send it to Art Bell and you never got it back to you? You wonder where that's well, that at? was when Wendell Stevens. I had my best oh. set of photos was um, I got it. And then what we do with the photos, because then we we're shooting 35 millimeter and, and people would say, OK, you've baked it or whatever. So we would we would not cut the film. We would leave the whole film uncut. And so I had 24 uh, frames of, of photographs of these UFOs, which were as clear as day. They were really up close and stuff like that. And I sent it to um, Wendell Stevens and he never got it. And that That's was the original. Crazy. So I never had those films that all disappeared. So. I had Jimmy Church ask around about that, if anybody had heard or seen or knew where that might be. I tried to do that for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wendell had, if you ever saw his collection, it was at um, uh, the guy who owned uh, UFO um, Congress. Uh, um, name's escaping me now. But I saw the, 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 the uh, albums of, of uh, slide photographs and photographs that Wendell Stevens had, and I bet you there was, oh, yeah, there had I to be 20,000 20, photographs there. I've bugged that guy who bought part of that at auction. So John Rayo was the guy who owned the collection. He he bought a lot of Wendell Stevens uh, stuff when when he died. It was a massive yeah, there's collection. Another, I got there's another younger guy that has some of it mm -hmm. now too. So yeah, I'll get you his name because yeah, I've I've wanted to find those. For you <laughs> if they if they're still around yeah so let's ask been, valet maybe he has them they've been showing off uh, for many many years all these different but then the thing is with the Kowski saying they're all basically different when you start really looking closely at them and that's where i think it's like these, these things, what are they doing they're not doing anything they're just sitting there and they're saying hello take a photo and they're not doing anything they just want you to photograph it they want you to display it and they want you to know the world is not the place you think it is. All right. Who's going to take over screen share uh, now? Deb, let's go Deb, Deb Fru, because she's got the, the photographs that were taken at this C5 event that was held. And as, as she pointed out, this was not a UFO event. This was, uh, you know, there's people doing tarot card reading and, you know, channeling yeah, people I, and stuff I like that. I call it more of a heist event. And I think Deb said it beautifully when it's like a, a metaphysical event more than C5 yeah. is so uniquely uh, UFO. <laughs> so so this was something she did just because we she had uh, Jeff there to show this. And I think yeah, I think she actually had some pushback, didn't you, Deb, that they really didn't want UFO people there? And that's what happens in the Paris, the parapsychology like ions. Most people don't know ions will not touch UFOs. Because they they believe that they're going to lose all their funding if they their uh, ESP type people that are funding their stuff here they're doing UFOs are going to they're going to pull out so they will not touch UFOs the same as major UFO documentary people if you take a look at their documentaries they will not touch experiences they will not talk about people who've been on board the craft because because that's uh, they figure they're going to lose their their funding and, uh, and they, well, there's one said, famous ones that I can't go there well I. I Sorry, oh, I was going to say the big scandalous one right now is how Whitley Strieber wasn't allowed to speak at Seoul. Well, that's the thing. They don't want they don't want experiences. Yeah. They don't want. That's what if you heard the interview with um, um, Danny Sheehan, 
Danny Sheehan said when they were negotiating with the contractors between Congress and the contractors, the contractors asked them, could you please not bring up abductions? They were actually negotiating this and they said, leave it off the table. They were, if we're going to discuss uh, hardware and getting files and stuff like that, that's something people just don't want to discuss. And that may be the whole deal is when you get to that, then the whole nuts and bolts thing starts to fall apart. And uh, if the pre president has to stand up and say, uh, you know, this is much more complex than you think. It's all, it's all, there's no time, there's no space. It's all uh, one thing. It's all alive. It's conscious. Love is, and love is the key to the whole thing. Uh, you're not going to go there. They, they want, you know, technology, they want weapons, they want all this kind of stuff. So uh, that's the kind of stuff people will not touch. And that's where Whitley was upset. But even he was told, I think it was by Jim Semivan. Well, that's understandable. They didn't want to go there. They, 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 there was a bunch of contractor people who were at the Seoul conference who basically would have walked out. It's a shame. Well, I want to say that we didn't really have that that mindset uh, going in this year, that year. That was 2021. Back in the olden days yeah. when, you know, experiencers were completely off the map. You couldn't talk about that. You couldn't talk about cryptids, the, you know, these were all, these were the, these were the kooks, you know, and, we didn't and, have that. In fact, many of the people who came and spoke had UFO, they were UFO adjacent and we held a CE5. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like we were trying to avoid it. Well, so, was it? it? I didn't know if it was a true like CE5 following the protocols or if it was we, more yeah. heist related. Actually, but... it, we had Marcel Vitovic and... Yeah. Oh. Um, Kimberly Porth, yeah. who are the ones who um, facilitated it, and they just left out the puja. That was all. Yeah. So, and it was just for time consideration. And we had, and we had the radios going. I actually filmed the radios that started to go off. Right. There's three right. radios, yep. and two of them were were going off, which is they all three should go off if some signal coming from the town or something. It should all be going off. But back to your point, it, it is the the reverse happens as well. Because I remember before I had my consciousness experience in 2012, I was doing the nuts and bolts stuff. And when I went to UFO Congress and places like that, when I went into the uh, big room where the women are doing healing and crystals, I go, oh, come on already. It's right. Like, oh, look the other exactly. way. Just don't even look as you're going. To the, it's like these women are just like, woo, they're totally crazy. And then it's like, hallelujah. It's like, well, my my goal at this conference is always to bring you the cutting edge in all of the aspects That's of metaphysics, it. It's so be, because you can't say one's right and one's wrong. You don't know. Anyway, can anybody can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. OK, this is my front yard. Actually, I live in a log cabin on a lake in the woods, and um, this was one of my first attempts. So I thought I would take this picture. That's pretty good um, for a first attempt. Yeah. I was pretty amazed. Um, at the CE5 itself, we had this particular picture. Hang on, I'm waiting for it to come up. Come on. Oh, goodness. All right, this one. Oh, golly. This is unbelievable, but this is my day. Mm -hmm. Can you see this lady? Not yet? No. She's... Okay, hold on. Come on. Hmm. Am I on share screen? You're on share screen. I can see the trees okay. and this object going vertically. All right. Can you go? Can you go full screen? Can you go to the? I, I'm trying. I think that's on your end to go full screen. Deb, when you share a screen, um, usually it'll let you select like the window you're sharing. I, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So, but, but if you if you uh, exit out of it and then try and share again, you should be able to. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you can't see the the green lady. No. No. What I'm saying is like stop sharing your screen and then share it again. Oh, okay. Uh, stop share. All right. I'm going back in. Share again. Okay. Yeah. All right. There so there it is. Oh. So the reason that this picture is significant, this was also during the CE5, and there was no light source. The That side of this woman um, is a graveyard. It was completely black. And 
she shows up in a photograph like this. And I spoke with Marcel the next morning about it. And he said, oftentimes entities superimpose themselves on people so you can see them. Otherwise, they're not that visible. And that's what he took this to be. He took this to be an entity was superimposing itself on this woman. And um, she was at the time meditating. And so just uh, just wanted to sh share that with you because she was green. And we're talking about all these green people. Amazing. Go going back in, I only have four pictures. So I have a lot more, but in the in the interest of time. Okay. So we have this lovely woman, uh, Diane O'Connor, who takes pictures of orbs. She's the orb lady. Oh, yeah. And she always gets lots and lots of orbs. And she took this picture of me. Can anybody see the orb? Yep. It's a oh, big... Right above your heart? It's a, no. It's a big half of a golden orb. You see it right here? Can you see yeah. my cursor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what the camera focused on. It didn't focus on me. Oh, yeah, yeah. It right. focused right. on this classic golden orb. It's the classic orb shape. I mean, with all the, That's you know, impressive. the outline and, and so forth. And I had never seen anything like that before. So I thought it was pretty cool that it was in perfect focus. And I am all blurry. Yeah. So, Although I do above, see the one above your heart. Someone yeah, that's what I was looking at. Well, actually, I had a very sparkly top on, and I'm pretty sure that was a sparkle. But that's a pretty big spark. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's pretty, interesting. The, the it's it's just a phenomenon I had not seen before. You know, from a camera. Yeah. It, it looks think, like you, you wonder what the heck is going on. It looks like you were one. holding it in your hand, and you accidentally I know. threw it backwards. <laughs> But this is the last one. This one makes me laugh because Grant was interviewing wow. me. Grant was interviewing me when this happened. Wow. <laughs> and I was watching the playback and I was like, wait a minute. This thing rolled into the frame and sat there on my shoulders for a little bit. And then it rolled off. Those colors, Deb. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? Wow. It's making you look like a saint. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so thank that, you for letting me share. It. I have I have a jillion more, but there's so many really, you know, people who dedicate all their time to this. So I'm going to turn it back to you. And in fact, I'm sorry to say I have to go, but I'm going to tune in and watch the replay because I can't wait to see all your pictures. So thank you so much for for just allowing me to show my my tiny little collection well thank Thanks you and make sure you've got your your thing in the um the chat before you leave as to uh, oh yeah oh by your, the way your... nicole i want to tell you that the um location that we are having the venue for this year has native american burial grounds on it and, and our yet. opening our opening ceremony is going to be Native Americans who are coming in to honor the ancestors and making peace with everyone so that we can have a wonderful weekend. So, and they're I dying. Might to, I might they're, have to bring a date and torture hey, somebody for an entire weekend. <laughs> they're dying for the CE5 that's coming up. We're doing another one this year. So it's going to be pretty amazing. Stuff and I know it's only like, Four, four hours, four and a half, sometimes six if I venture into Wisconsin. But I, I did the thing with Kimberly and the group mm -hmm. and at the big mound and yeah, yeah. The classic, right? When we were, you know, taking everything down is when our radios started going off. Like Yeah, this is not Cahokia, oh, trust me, but it's it's ours and we're gonna do it for this year. So thanks everybody. I'm so impressed with all of you and I can't wait to see the rest of this later on a replay. Mm -hmm. Adios. Beautiful. Thank you, Thank you, you for Deb. joining us. Okay. Thanks, Grant. Okay. Let's see. Um, maybe I'll just quickly, uh, who else is, is on here? I can quickly show some of Tress's. And so I've got some others mixed up, and she can tell me which ones are hers, which ones aren't. Because <laughs> she has like a different type of. Um, Did you get the one? 
did my mm, muted no did you get the one off echo whispers that i put up just a few days ago no no i didn't that's well, a craft it's a good one it's one wow, that I was... well echo whispers I'll, I'll be going there everybody else should be going there as well <laughs> yeah. yeah Graham. i think i sent you the facebook invite when tress first started it yeah, yeah, that's one of mine. Yeah, that's just all the beings up the top and all the rods coming down from above. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I actually yeah. see them standing outside. I feel and see them just all flying around me with their energy. How do we get out of this screen here? What am I doing here? I think Hang that's on. the problem Deb just had. Did Do you have to go out of each one? It, it's because like when you're sharing the screen you're sharing a specific window mm -hmm. where you can like if you go out and then go back in you can have it so you're just sharing whatever you're looking at if that makes sense okay let me try again here I'll go back in share screen so then doesn't a, a window open and then there's a bunch of little yeah thumbnails there should be yeah. a thumbnail that's yeah okay this is the same one, but I'm I'm stuck. I can't move to the next. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, that's, that's mine. That's the orbs. Yeah, that was about. Um, that was about. Let me think now. 10, 14, but fifteen years ago. You were doing construction, right? Done. Yeah, we're getting an extension done on the house, and you can tell which the orbs are because you know yeah. they're just nothing like dust, and there was no dust around, and they're too. Two rods coming down from the craft above. And then you can see a way back in the background a white round circle, which is yeah. a portal, which gets bigger and it changes color. Wow. Yeah, you have a lot with the big portals. That's I, I like got a lot and the other portals. the other thing is interesting is light travels in a straight line. Uh I remember a guy, RCMP, a federal police officer, telling me a story about coming across the border. This thing kept shutting his car down. And the uh, the light from the 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 uh, front uh, the car was going down onto the ground, and he said it was the most bizarre thing to see light being twisted down to the ground. So you got the same thing oh. here, where the light is not going in a straight line. It's a and it's and the the light is a very very bright bright piercing light compared to normal light, and it can go into a ball, and the the balls actually flies around my garden or wherever I am hitting off things and then it goes away up into the air um this is like yeah, a mist this, this is yours right yep this is this is my one this is the trees at the back of my house and there's a craft at the top and then the the actual the yellow parts where you see the whites are actual beings that are coming down from above and they just fly all around wow. you know the trees and that wow this one I like. Here's one of the ones where you see where the light stops at a certain point. It doesn't really see me coming from anywhere. And you see this in these beams where it's sort of like a it's like a self-contained thing. So explain this one. Well, I was just outside and calling them in and I saw them all around and I started taking photographs. And this one was much bigger than what was on the picture when I took it. It was massive. And then my beings, if you see across the bottom of the corner of the picture, that's one of the energy beings, but you actually can't see that because it's not full into the picture. But yeah, that's just one of the, the beams that just come down because you know there's always crafts around when yeah. you see them. They're always above them. They're wow. just trying to get your attention. And then that's the one, so there's a craft above there and then there's the energy being, and then we've got the the beams coming down from above the same wow. thing that orb is like bigger than the camera's able to even capture you see that yeah i've got bigger ones than that yeah. i've got yeah, massive the ones there's some you've seen some. In them. yeah, yeah see, the... it's, it's almost like a different type of uh almost like a different type of art um compared to yours jeff it's sort of like a she has a sort of a theme you'll see this theme over and over again in, in her photographs almost like everybody's getting a, a distinctive type of uh, show that's that's built for them yeah wow yeah and that was a lot of energy going on that night there's a lot the bright light that you see at the edge of the 
picture there onto the energy being is another craft with its lights on changing color. And then the beings come out of the craft along with all the beams and they just fly everywhere. You can see the energy coming from it there. It's just like it's shooting right across the picture. Wow. But these these energy beings, these big white energy beings actually turn into like a human being and walk about. They, they, they're just like us. That's just some of my um my light language writing that I do. I've got pages and pages of that. I love writing um in my own language. And um yeah, that's just some writing yeah. that I did a while ago. I've, I've, will you, have you done the video? Because I put a couple, I just in the last couple of weeks, I put a couple on Facebook where one from I, Georgia and then the one woman from France, where you see them doing it, where they're writing. And it's just like, just wow. You just amazing. I will do a video for you, Grant. I keep promising yeah. and it's just like everything else. I just <laughs> never get around to it, but I will do it. I will sit down and I will get a video done for you and get it sent to you. Yep. And that's the video. Look at the size of that. Oh, good okay. Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, I always wish I could get a bigger screen on a camera just to get more in. <laughs> but uh, yes, you, you can see the 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 light, the sort of the the wee uh, window in that one as well, and that's them again, just full wow. of um, energy, and that's the pink and orangey ones, all different ones, and that's like little white orbs that were all coming around. I mean, to see that. To stand in the garden and actually watch that going on is just lovely. It's just full of love. It's, um, do, you, do you have people around you or you've got a, a, a big property or? I'm, at the, well, I'm so, I've got, I've got a large property. Yes. Large, okay. large garden. Um, I've got sort of, um, um, sort of runs uh, for, for pets that I take in. Yeah. And at the back of me is a cemetery. So I've got the trees at the back of me that you see there over 200 yeah. years old. They've been here before that show, houses. So then we've got the trees and then we've got a lane that's really quiet. And then we've got the cemetery at the back. So I've got, I do have um, a little girl, a little boy that comes in from the cemetery and just wanders about with me and talks with me. And uh, yes, um, a lot goes on around me at the oh, time. God. We'll, and we'll I'm get not... working on the book. We we need to take your story out there. Yours, quite a unique story. Is this yours? That's not. No, that's not mine. That's not mine either. Not. No, that's no, mine. Is, <laughs> is that mine. yours? Yes. Yeah. This this one? No. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. Wow. That's mine. You're right um, that you uh, can tell which ones are are yours. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I think everybody knows their own. Eh? <laughs> it has a theme. Yeah. 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 And is that a portal? That's the craft. That's the 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 bottom of the craft. Oh, okay, okay. And then if you could see it properly, um, you would see how big it was. Now the portals, the portals are similar to the crafts because the crafts take on take on um the other species coming in and out as well so you have to decide which is a craft and which is a portal but i've known it for a long time and that's the craft and if you blew that up which i have that's not mine but if you had blown that one up with the craft there you would see the species in it no they're not mine that's mine <laughs> that's my yeah. one yeah that's all the beings coming in and what that's out that's my front bedroom window, yes. Wow. They're just all coming down. And that's mine, yeah, that's the trees. You got that broken beam. Uh, Annetta from Macedonia has that broken beam as well, where you can yeah, actually get, see it's sort of broken at the bottom there. I get that often. I get the beams coming in, and they can be like some two bits, and it's like a brown color yeah. through them or red. Yeah. And they're that's always awesome. pointed. And most people, uh, the first beam I saw was 2015. This is kind of, for me, is is recent. And then when you start talking to people like you and I talk to people and everybody seems to have these these photographs of the beams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's not, that's not mine. Oh, the, this no. is, uh, that's mine. Yeah, that's yours? Two okay, mine. hang on. <laughs> Go back Yeah, again. that was from Germany. That woman from Germany, I think, was those other ones. Right. The one before that was mine. I think you go back a bit. This one that here? one, that's my one as well, yeah. 
That's wow. all we need. That's a cool one. Coming in and out. And I don't do anything to the pictures. Sometimes I look at the pictures and it looks like I've done something to them, but I don't touch them. They're, I mean, occasionally I'll brighten them up if they're dark to see what's in the, the darkness. But apart from that, it's best to leave them. But yeah, that's just all the... Do you get messages while this is going on? Well, I speak to them all the time. They talk okay. to me and I talk to them all the time. And... Um, uh, they give me all sorts of, of messages about what's happening in that and, you know, to be aware of things and to tell people things and, yeah. Are you and, positive about the future? Or? Um, I'm positive in a way that the the future will change. It's going to come like a bang. Suddenly, it'll all change. Okay. And the ones that are awake and aware of it all will be fine. But the ones that are have come down to earth and taken so much out of earth and done a lot of things they will be the ones that will have to stand up and you know um be spoken to in a way but yes i, I mean mother earth will never die never die okay um yeah these are just all the orbs they all just came flying around They're just everywhere that's energy beings all coming in. They were changing actual shape that night. I can tell they were changing shape all over the place. Yeah. Yep, that's a portal at the back there. It's opening up, and then you've got the you've got the two energy beings and a rod coming down, and then you see all the energy around where the portal's opening up into the trees. I love the trees. Portals yeah. love the trees. Um, now that is a being. If you look at the, if you can take a, a look at it, you'll see the two eyes. I mean, I can't put my finger up because you won't see it, but you'll see the head and then you see the two eyes and then you see its nose and its mouth and it's carrying someone in its arms. I'm not exactly sure, but it's like a baby or something in its arms and it's flashing past me very quickly. So I'm getting it as it's sort of, chases back past me so it's an actual person with a young one in its arms going by wow is that yours that's mine yeah that's wow. mine and that's all the fairies that's all the angels the fairies whatever you would like to call them um at the top of the picture all in a small group flying around and that was just like them all everywhere just um, the energy, I mean, the energy is so powerful when they come in like that. So powerful. So people know what they got to look forward to when your book comes out. This is a spectacular. <laughs> Some of the, those pictures won't be in my book. There'll be new ones in it you've not seen. Yeah. It's a craft at the top in the sky there. And then we've got two beings coming down. And then you've got the three, you've got three big beings in front of you at the front of that picture. You've got the three big beings standing there. And then you've wow. got the other ones coming down for the craft above in the sky. So that's what that is. See, anybody looking at them, you wouldn't know that until you actually um, get to to understand these. That's a blue being. He's black eyes. He's yeah. black ear. And his mouth, his nose. And yeah. he's coming through. Wow. So that's a real blue being. That's not mine. That's mine. There's See the a, energy, energy yeah. all over the grass, everywhere. It's just, it's just putting all the energy all over there. I can imagine them all together doing that all over the world. It's all love. It's just all pure love they're sending out. No, nope, that's not oh. mine, not my doggy. <laughs> ah, they're mine. <laughs> that's the pink ones and the blue ones and the white ones all coming yeah, the in. The giant reds, yeah, they call it the giant reds. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they're the healers. They come in when you're... The giant ones, red ones, will come in if you're feeling down or unwell or that. They'll come to, to sort of give you a healing. Beautiful. Well, I'm yeah. looking forward to, to the to the book, and I thank you for sharing <laughs> your story. It is uh, fascinating and revealing. Thank you. Janet, uh, you've got some stuff you wanted to show. Are you still here? Janet here from the Orb Farm. Uh, right. I'm. Yep. I'm right. Oh, you're here. just setting up. Okay. Yeah. No. I just uh, want to show you something 
uh, quick, and I apologize for having to do it this way because I am so not tech savvy. I haven't got this off my phone, but I will just hold my phone up to the screen. This is what the one I was telling you about when uh, uh, when I stepped out and it was so still, and then all these orbs are coming around. So I'd be interested, Tress, in your thoughts on this. So bear with me. Hold on. Can you see it there? Yeah, yeah. See all yeah. these orbs flying around? Yeah. I, fil I filmed that with Mark, uh, with uh, Rob Freeman when we went um, out. I've got similar. Have you got something like that? Yeah, it was because very cold there was that no night. I remember it was very cold. And yeah. people said it was dust, but there was, again, it was no um there was no it was about freezing about zero celsius and it was as still as could be but this this was going on yes um uh, i've got lots i've got lots of videos like that janet when they all come in they seem to be like they're coming through a portal all at once and they're just all gathering and flashing across and past you yes but yeah i went out my back door um a couple of years ago i think it was about my back door and i took the a video and they were just everywhere there's mountains of them there's so many wow. yeah and and the reason it surprised me so much is because there was no air movement that night. So there was a yeah. lot of moisture in the air. So you can imagine my surprise when there is no air movement and I hold my camera up and these things are flying all over. And it yeah. was just like, whoa. <laughs> get, get your partner, Miles, to say hello here. Oh, I, I saw him walk through the camera there. Yep. This, this is the man in charge of the... Uh, Folks. Hello, hello, Miles. You're the you're the guy in charge of the big TV screen. When we show the orbs, you're the guy that that gets everybody's things and puts them in the camera. And uh, so, thank you for doing that. It's like uh, yeah, fascinating. No, no problem at all. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna go look. I've got a good uh, video that shows something similar to what we were just. Okay, so just I'll just show you a few of the mists real quick. Um, the granular mist can... for sure. You got to show that one. There's, uh, yeah. That was... Now, what do I do? Do I hit share screen on the bottom? Share screen, yeah. And that. then there'll be, okay. click on the window of, of the thing you want to show. There'll be a couple of windows come up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, hold on here. How many photos would you have? Oh. Jeez, I don't know, thousands, but, uh, oh, yeah. you know, it... Um, I think most people on here have got thousands. Yeah, and, you know, they're not as well organized as they should be, right? Uh, as are all of us. You know... When's your book coming out? A, my book? <laughs> 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 I know, I, you know, I actually sat down and opened a file and I called it thing, you know, it's time to write this down and I haven't done it. So <laughs> you must be the, the book fairy to uh, <laughs> the book fairy, yeah. give everybody, give everybody the tweak. So, uh, okay, here's just some of the plasmas and miss. Um, now, can you see this? It hasn't come up. So yet. I got this the thumbnail. So that's not coming up yet. Oh, crap. It's that thing where you got to go out and back in again. To... Okay. Anything yet? No, I can see the the small versions. I don't know how to do this. Sorry. That's the one we want to see. The one your cursor's over. That's the that's the one that is the most impressive. There. Okay. The, Can you the see one... it now? No, unfortunately, no. You have to. I get try try share, stop share again and then come back in and try again. Just leave. Oh, there it is. There. Okay, you got it. This is this is the one that people said. Oh, she took a piece of glass. She glued salt or sugar to the glass. And then <laughs> yeah. it. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. She did. It's like, that is <laughs> so, just amazing. The yeah, granular there's that mist. one. And there's this. Uh, Completely clean in one spot of the film. And 
Yeah, and uh, hold on here. Sorry for this. I I'm That's not okay. very good. No, no. Well, we're we're all having the same. Okay. Can you see this one? Can you see that one now with the colors and everything in it? No, no, not no. yet. Oh, I see my blue orb there in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here you go. There we are. There. Oh, is that ever nice? So you've got yeah. a, a particular style. You're... That, that, that's interesting. I it, think you're um, the only one that I've seen that has this granular stuff. Yeah, and, and is, I really want to put it together in a, in a little bit better format. So I'm trying to categorize it. Of course, I haven't got that'd it be beautiful yet. as a painting if you got that as a oh, painting. That would be just you know what I turned around, I snapped that, I came in, and wow. and it it is the awe of it, the awe it struck is. it because it's like this curtain of colors and granules. It's and, almost like uh, you see those ones from the web telescope where they have the multitude yeah. of colors and stuff like that. That's Wow, that'd be, you, know, cause you can, you can get that done now if you can get it expanded to, you know, like 24 inches across and hang it. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, and I've, if I could, um, I, I would like to dig deeper into that because when you bring that up and you keep zooming in and zooming in, each one of those looks like a little galaxy to me. So wow. the further you look in, it, it's just a fascinating thing, but anyways, I will, I'll get it together you know, a little bit better. I've done a few uh, PowerPoints on this stuff and trying to arrange it for PowerPoints. And, and uh, you know, it it is interesting. Everybody has a different style or they're showing us all different stuff, I think. So we share it all. Um, the one thing you know. have that maybe you can maybe look for, where I can talk about it while you're doing it, is you have some that were taken before digital photographs were taken. You went back, yeah, you have one me... with your a wedding, yeah. and you have the uh, one Yeah, from that was with... my brother's wedding. Let me see if I can mm -hmm. find that. I've actually got two Damn of those. It. I've actually got two of those photographs like that. I've got one that's like the shape of a dragon coming around me, and oh, it's really? got the same sort of speckles all in it. And I've got another one somewhere. I mean, these are going back 10 years, something wow. like that. And, well, I'll uh, link you two one. together, and you can you can share those photographs and see if you can come up with something between the two. Yeah, of them. I'll need to find them out of all my other yeah, pieces. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not I'll, until I'll just... you see something you remember you've got it. And you think, gosh, I've got one like that as well. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I promise I'll get some of these together and then maybe uh, be a little more prepared the next time. But um, it 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 um, it it awes me every time I go out and I know they're there and I should be taking better advantage of it. But I walk out and shoot these anytime. And I can remember when I first started, I thought, man, if I could just get one orb picture, I'd think the world was a fabulous place. Now I got so many of them. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> And you convert and you converted some relatives, right? You converted some people to take yes, it up the game. My, yeah. So my nieces, uh, when they were up here, I showed them this, and they were uh, thirteen and fifteen at the time. So they went back to the farm I grew up on, and they shot amazing, amazing stuff. They showed me. It's like Auntie Janet, what do you think of this? And that, like, their pictures were better than mine, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah did these hook on do they like i said to tom dongo you know are these your orbs did i bring them back like it really does go from person to person don't you think joan dylan i think it maybe, goes from person maybe. to person yeah. <laughs> yeah damn it just i couldn't help but notice he took that photograph on my birthday say again i took what you took that photograph on my birthday Oh, oh wow you maybe you sent me the orbs <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you it's they never cease to amaze me they'll do something different or you talk to them and then you get a different shot or and you know you get the granular and the next time you get this orb storm and then when grant and dester were here remember grant we were laughing so much because you were facing this way and you were shooting and there was no orbs yeah. in front of you but there was all these orbs behind you <laughs> yeah or the one where i was shooting and the orb was right in front it looked like i was filming this orb like two feet in front of my face <laughs> yeah. and it was just like they're having fun with you man you know, it was just like goofing around, eh? Let's just so, see if I can find that photo. Maybe we can end with that. I'll find that for some of those photos <laughs> we took at the the orb farm. It was uh hang on. 
I'm probably not gonna be able to find it. It's gonna take because I, I would say there's probably a million photographs. Like a lot of people here sent me photographs and I sort of put them in a file. And there's just so many people say there's no evidence. And it's like, you could not possibly have looked at the evidence. I mean, when you look at a yeah. million photographs, something something definitely is going on that. Uh... Yeah. Well, that's funny. We just came back from vacation. So we were invited to some friends of ours and they're in the Turks. And so, of course, I take my camera along and and uh, the gentleman is very uh, skeptical left brain. And I was taking these pictures and showing them. And he's like, yeah, I said, these are on your property, you know, and he's he's, yeah, you know, it's dust. It's this, it's that. And I says, OK, but I'll leave them with you. <laughs> They're your orbs now. <laughs> yeah. I'll show a good uh, orb storm video here real quick. Uh, let's see. And and Joan and I were talking about this, and I, I think the moisture has a lot to do with it, because when it's misty or the, the summer nights where um, the air is quite dense and heavy, you know, the energy seems to hook on to that. Was, is that how you would read it, Tress? I think there Yeah, I mean, moisture. I remember I was I was outside taking a film and I had some friends with me and I'm saying that is they, these are robs and they're going, no, it's dust, it's dust. It's in the air, it's dust. I'm saying, no, it's actually that I've got this row going on in the film as well. They just nobody believed to me that they were actually orbs because that's what yeah. they were. <laughs> but yeah, certain times of the year they'll come out. I noticed that it's usually yeah. maybe yeah. about June, June, July, August yeah. they come. Yeah. Even in the rain, I find. You can tell yeah. the difference between the mm -hmm. raindrops and the orbs. Oh, that's awesome, oh, yeah. Jeff. Yeah, this was, uh, so my, my younger sister passed away a year ago. Uh, this was, and this was like the, the day of, I guess, I stayed at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. And I just started filming in my old room. Wow. And it was just a, uh, that's amazing. It comes up way better when I'm not sharing my screen like on the actual phone, yeah. but yeah. Um, it's just interesting the uh, attachment to like strong emotions and. Mm -hmm. No, it's um, I I love it. It's I know they're out there whenever I want to go out and shoot them, and then you get a little bit lazy, and then they'll give you some like the orb storm that I go the night I go out, it's just like, don't forget about us. Here's some, here's some amazing stuff to see. And you come back in and mm -hmm. all again. So yeah, no. it, it's a lovely I thing. usually, I usually go out and say, it's too cold. I can't stand out here in this weather. <laughs> you leave forgive me. I have to go back in. Too <laughs> so cold just here, Tress, is minus 30. <laughs> it's freezing here as well. Oh dear. I'll be back in the summer. <laughs> But they've actually, these large uh, beings of mine are actually in the house now. They'll be coming in more and more. Uh, though I see them when I'm taking the pictures in the house, they're in the house just wandering around everywhere. So I've not been going out so much lately because I've been in the house. But, yeah. I just oh, had well, a yeah. show. I don't, do I need don't. permission to, yep. to share screen? No, no, I think you can share. Just go ahead. Uh, uh oh. Yeah. Everybody, you got it. There you Dutch. go. Uh, no, I'm gonna get this done. Um, ah, here we go. Blue Nices, that's sort of my theme. Yeah, oh, yeah, we gotta do the blue ones. Yeah, this is. Um, there we go. You can see them. Yep, yeah, yeah wow. Mm. That. Wow, beautiful. These, uh, these I've taken in the, I haven't posted anything for a while, but these would be the second half of last year then. Mm -hmm. wow. Isn't that amazing? Like Usually taken in uh, in the high moisture or even rain, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is, if, if this was like uh, dust, all the photos would look the same. And you see these patterns, it's person's getting this pattern this pattern they're not the same and you yeah. can always tell the rain from the actual orbs that's, that's right big, that's right difference. yes uh, you look, at, you look at enough of them you for sure mm -hmm. it's like snow when i go out and uh, shoot mm. the snow you can tell the difference the orbs around the snow is not right i mean you can tell 
Beautiful, yeah. Joan. Yeah, the beautiful. Reminds me of Stan Hose. Yeah. Yes, it does look like Stan's. We some of them, I mean, I, those. If I, if I assumed in it would be better, but that, but those have quite a bit of um, detail, yeah. really profile. Yeah. Yeah. And one more here. I often can get. See our, go ahead, Jess. Yeah. You can see the beings in them, the faces, and the last ones you just showed just now. There's two with beings sort of looking out of them. The one before this one? Yes. Uh huh. There, the one that's pointed on my side, I'm on my right side of the picture. You can see the nose and the eyes and the forehead. And you can this see one? how it peeks down, down, the, down over this, towards the side, over, okay. right side, there, yep, there, that there, that one. That's got okay. a being in it. You can see his eyes. He's oh, looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the one you go back to above, below the bright, bright one, um, there. There's a being in that back, back to the one you've just been to there. There's a being in there, face looking out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to uh to work on these a bit. I just whipped them together today. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh and uh Food shaped. You know what I mean? Like lemony, like uh yeah. there's almost like a they're circular, obviously, but there's like a point, like almost like points on the end of some of them that are yeah, interesting. I did. Other one I had was oh yeah here's some with uh these aren't blue it's more different colors cool uh, yeah <laughs> and you know they're all so happy and just full of love when you see them look yeah. at those colored ones it, up towards these the will be raindrops area. in the yeah black things okay uh -huh. that's rain coming at least that's my take on it. I like how it's raining, and yet you, these, I guess, are moving up, you would say, right? Because they're yes. the trail behind them. And look at that beautiful I, red one at the top there. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, if I zoomed in, you could see the, the colors a little better. But. Uh, and rain does not move from down to up, right? <laughs> not usually, no. <laughs> not even in Holland. We get a lot of rain, but it's always coming down. Yeah. Uh, Oh, this uh, is this neat. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, and, and look oh. at the colors. Yeah. That almost looks yeah. like Christmas lights. It's so beautiful. Yeah, so the oranges so and the yellows and They're lovely. Stunning. I don't I usually get the, the blue guys that I don't usually get this sort of thing, but sure nice. Mm. It's gorgeous. You can make Christmas cards out of these because it's so I Christmas just put one on a Christmas card. I did I didn't really say what it was. Nobody said too yeah. much, but <laughs> <laughs> you gotta teach them gradually, I guess. Yeah. That's yeah. Not about, about yeah. I had one, I don't know if this will work. I had one uh indoor thing taken in Brandon. Oh yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah, it's similar to yours, uh, with the camera outside, where there's just yeah. like a like a storm of them. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh what I had prepared. Lovely. Thank you. Amazing. Let me just um see if I can show the one and then maybe we'll call it a day. Here's the Hopefully this will come up. Oh, that's, you can see that? That's that's the big, uh, we can just see the little one. Yeah. The one big, up the, towards the right-hand side, but that's the one between you and Desta, Grant. If you is, go a line, two lines up and over to the far right. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Hang on. These oh, are yeah, all taken. The, these are all taken at the orb farm. Yeah, and there's there is that picture grant that I took before um, digital with the two guys at Halifax. At, yeah, uh, I don't know if it's on you. This is the one I was I was wanting to show. Is the one with yeah. the the orb between Destin and I at the orb farm? Yes, on the on the top right there. That's the one you're talking about, right? Yeah. 
it's on the top right. It's just tiny. Oh, okay. No, no. I'm, I've got it full screen here. Hang on. Why we're not getting it? You got to like go back out and. All right. Is 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 it still full? Still. Still, we still got the thumbnail. Okay. Hang on. Oh shoot. Then you didn't see. Hang on. Uh, let me try again. Is that that's the one from Halifax, yeah. Yeah, that's that's before that's before digital cameras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one like that I took in London and on a marching band trip in high school. Interesting. That's like an analog photo like that, yeah. Yeah. I've got a very interesting one that um I took when my daughter was only about two, and it's like it's not, I don't believe it was the camera itself, but it's like she's standing in the snow and then there's like an energy all round her above with her inside the energy. It's just a, a different photograph altogether. Wow. Beautiful. Well, maybe we should call it a day and um, maybe sometime Thank we'll you. have to do another one of those orb storms, which was, was uh, I don't know how many people were involved in that, but we... Uh, uh, for people who don't know, we did the thing for an hour where everybody just posted their photographs and it was just like, <laughs> ch -ch 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 -ch, for an hour, please, or photographs. There's no commentary to sit there and just to give people the idea how many photographs there are out there. This is how many uh, different kinds of dust, Grant. How, many, yeah, <laughs> how colorful dust can be. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank, thank you, you for everybody. everybody for showing up and, uh, uh, when when time comes, I'll give everybody their message when their their book is supposed to come out, and we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll help spread the word and to to other people. Because as I said, if you realize now that Bob Bigelow, who's uh, the major contractor to the government, was into orbs, I mean, a lot of people kept silent. But uh, this is a story that will eventually come out, and uh, uh, you'll all feel better that you weren't so so crazy as we as people thought we were. For sure. <laughs> Okay, Thank any you, parting Grant. words? Thanks, Nicole? everybody. Thanks. I got sidetracked doing the whole mom thing, so I wasn't uh -oh. able to throw in, but I was watching. I saw some of my favorite blue ones, so <laughs> thank you, everybody, for <laughs> joining, and we'll be in touch soon, I'm sure. So thank okay. you again, as always. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye Namaste. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye.